What's up? It's your girl, Brianna B. And make sure y'all tune into the hottest podcast in the city, Shy vs. Everybody. What up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. This is Shy Rizé Bike Podcast. We got two special guests in the building today. We got uh, Kyle Mack. He's a rapper. Yes, sir. Thank you for letting me be here, man. For sure, for sure. We got Unpopular Ashley, Lil Ashley, Cash Ashley, <laughs> Cash Cash, <laughs> all of the above in the building as well. She's a poet, and she also has her own business, um, Simply.Natural, right? Yep, Simple.Natural. Simple.Natural. Mm-hmm. Okay, yep, yep. So, uh, like I told y'all before we uh, start recording, before every episode get to starting, you know, YouTube and everything you, you guys do, we do a thing called Salute Me While I'm Here. Uh, I started this because the whole, um, I know with Slick B, y'all know about him yeah. passing away, and then Colby and stuff. Like We tend to um, salute people and give them their flowers once they're gone. So there's a lot of times that yeah, we don't, you know what I'm saying, show that love to people, you know, while they're still here. So um, instead of doing like the, you know, the usual, your mom, your somebody close to you, somebody who, uh, you know what I'm saying, least suspect the salute. So uh, I start off while y'all think. Um, I'm going to start off with, uh, her name is Brittany Dorsey. She's uh, my fiance cousin. Um, we got cool just off of the strength of basketball and uh, sports. Uh, she found out I coach. I found out she man a hell of a basketball player. Like to be a girl, she will fuck dudes up like <laughs> for real, for real. So uh, and she just put uh, put me on with her uh, AAU team that she's starting called In the Know. She actually has a whole organization In the Know. It's like an anti-bullying thing or whatever. She has clothes. She has hoodies. She has everything. And now we're starting the AAU team. So she's just a good person, man. Like she a great person. It's, it's often that you, you know, it's not often that you find somebody who show you love like you are family. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna salute her, Brittany. Love you. You know what I'm saying? Keep it, keep, keep being you. So uh, who y'all got? Y'all got somebody? Cause last time I had two people, they couldn't think of one person. I'm like God damn, y'all selfish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I got so I got somebody. So um. So you said think of somebody that's like not typical that you just don't mm-hmm. think like I got. So I'm not gonna pick nobody from like my immediately super close circle, but I'm mm-hmm. gonna give a shout out to one of my friends. Mm-hmm. Her name is Candice Green. Mm-hmm. Uh, I met her when I used to work at Enterprise, and ever since then she just been grinding. She been through a lot, but she started her own company. Mm-hmm. She just started a event page on Instagram, basically just highlighting things to do in Detroit, which I think is very helpful because a lot of people are always like, it's nothing to do. Where yeah, do I yeah. find something? So she started a page called The Green Spot. Okay. And she goes and like highlights events and people who have shows. And I think it's just a really good platform. Just seeing her grinding mm-hmm. and coming up and doing a lot. Like she's with uh, We Run 313, you know, okay, like working out yeah, and yeah, yeah. a lot. She's just doing a lot. So I just want to say, keep up the good work. I see you shining, and I just want to give you a shout-out today. So, so, shout-out, shout-out. What's her name again, Candace? Candace Green. What's up, Candace Green? Yeah, Greeny Beanie. Okay, what's up, Kyle, man? You got somebody? Yes, yes. I I actually don't have, like, it's not even, like, a single person, but shout-out to uh, Motown, Mm -hmm. because Motown, uh, I don't know if you guys know about this, but Motown, offer they're offering a great opportunity for a lot of uh, artists within the area, the city, Mm -hmm. from Michigan. Uh, they offer a uh, 12-week program and a $20,000 uh, grant okay. for artists. So what it is is any local artists or any artists that are uh, part of a band or group from mm-hmm. Detroit, local area, they submit mm-hmm. uh, their music. Yesterday was actually the last day. Okay. You submit your music and uh, you have the opportunity to be part, uh, be a part of their like accelerator program, mm-hmm. which is kind of like how they kind of get you the inside of the industry, get okay. you connected with the right people while also uh, providing a grant for you to help you build your fan base, build, build your brand, yeah. you know, just help give you that jump start that an artist really could need you that's know up, and it's up. motown so yeah, yeah. it's like the hometown hero so oh, yeah. that's a huge shout out to them man and okay. i i went to like a, a workshop 
slash like seminar they had yesterday and it was really dope like they uh just gave like some great feedback on like digital distribution mm. the type of stuff that like artists in this new age need to think about oh, and yeah. know like inside about so it's really cool they like really looking out for the city okay that's what's up that's what's up some good information right there okay okay now uh after that we usually start off with uh i know it's march you know what I'm saying it's still early in the year so um Last year, 2019, give me some ups and downs of 2019. I know one down for me was, oh, I had to come home, man. I had to cut my hair off, man. It, it was a sad day. <laughs> it was a sad day, but it was like, you know, when you get them fresh haircuts and it don't look fresh no more, you know, it's like, damn, I, I really need to go home. Like, I can't be out here looking like LeBron James, man. So when I made that cut, I mean, I still, to this day, I, I'm still getting used to the whole no hair thing or whatever. So that was like uh, the the worst part of my year was cutting my hair off, letting the waves go. But then when you get in the waves, like, damn, I ain't got waves on the side. I can't even, I ain't got enough hair on top to even get waves. Like, <laughs> so what y'all, uh, what would y'all like ups and downs for 2019? Do you want to go first? I'll go first. Uh, <laughs> man, you put me know. on the my, side, my, right? My down, my down, uh, my uncle passed away, uh, last year at the beginning of the year. So, oh, rest in peace. Was, yes, man, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was just hard for the fam. Yeah. Uh, I would say a, uh, a great, high of the year that was my low high i would say is being able to perform at the crowfoot mm. uh actually i take that back the, even though the crowfoot is one i would say being able to perform at imported from the d back to back that's okay. that's my high of the year okay that's what's up what, what about you uh so my down for the year my best friend passed away oh wow dang. that was like a huge blow yeah um and he was supposed to perform at my launch party mm. so he died like three weeks before my launch party yeah and so i really had to pull it together to still launch my business on the date that i had planned yeah so that was one of my highs for last year is actually like going forward with the business just trying to think of like what he would want me to do mm -hmm. so i launched my business on the 4th of july mm -hmm. uh 2020 uh what 2019 okay and then also we got engaged last year Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We was going to get to that. Yeah, I got engaged last year, too. things that happened last year. Yeah, and then with, uh, the thing with death, man, like, how do y'all, like, with death, we was talking about this at work, like, do that open your eyes up to, like, just yourself or whatever? Because I know with me, it's like, for some reason, with the Nipsey Hustle death, that hit me hard, because by him being, like, what, 32, 33, the impact he made on everybody, you know what I'm saying, in his, in his community lives and stuff like that, like... It, it just gave me some type of energy, like, all right, I need to start this stuff and stop, you know what I'm saying, procrastinating and be like, all right, I'm going to wait till this time, I'm going to wait till that time, you know. Even with this podcast, I was talking about starting that years ago, you know what I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> talking to him about it. So I'm like, all right, let me go ahead and put this in, the, you know what I'm saying, in place. Me coaching, like, I am just want to make sure I make these moves because you never know, like, shit, tomorrow not promise at all. Facts. Yeah. So you got to go ahead and, you know what I'm saying, get things into play. Like, how do y'all think about death? Like, do y'all... Think about that or try to, like, make moves or whatever. I think after, like, after my best friend died, it kind of changed my mind on a lot of things because he had a huge funeral. Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't even room for people to sit down. Like, a lot of people were standing up. It yeah. was real packed. Okay. And a lot of people just had a lot of things to say about the impact that he had on their lives personally. And it was kind of like, you get that mind, like, what are people going to say at my funeral? Exactly, like, have exactly. I started doing enough? Have I done enough? Am I in a community enough? Mm -hmm. Am I giving back enough? Am I actually taking this time, yeah. you know, with the time that I have? And have I made an impact? Am I doing all that I can with the yeah. time that I have? So, like, it wasn't really um, Nipsey depth because... Nipsey really didn't hit me as hard as like when Kobe died. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh that yeah. Was, we was on the show doing the show, and I found out as soon as we were done with the show, like, damn, what? This got to be a joke. Like Man, for real. Yes, like uh, so I I definitely think it kind of makes you appreciate the people around you, mm -hmm. and like even for me, it wasn't even me like reaching out to more people. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it was me getting rid of people. You know, oh, yeah, like other yeah. people that you got I felt, to. yeah, like Sometimes. they weren't added value to my life or yeah. you know stressing me out and it's like shoot I, if that could have been me you oh, know yeah. like and if that was me yeah you know what would i regret you try you try to start like un, un, untangling your life like what can i get rid of what mm -hmm. do i need to start doing more of and you start making those yeah. decisions quicker you yeah. know i remember i was living in texas before i had moved back to detroit my older brother said something like your four closest friends or five closest friends 
They are you. Exactly. Because for the most part, you feed you feed off that energy that your you know saying your close circle you know around Absolutely. you whatever. So if your friends still talking about doing the same thing y'all was doing in the early twenties or whatever when y'all was in high school, like you need to get rid of those friends. Even though you may love those friends, like sometimes you got to have enough love to push them away. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So Definitely. with death, like it's crazy because I ain't had lost so many people. Like I ain't became like used to it a little bit. I mean, that's sad to say. I ain't lost, you know, both my parents. I ain't lost grandparents. I ain't lost friends. Like, at the wild, like, damn, like, another person? You Make feel me? Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. Just like, yeah. Yeah, but that Kobe jump, like, that's my first time crying about somebody who wasn't related to me. Yeah. Like, my son caught me crying. I'm like, damn. Get out of here, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. the first time seeing me cry. Like, like dad, you all right? Like, go to the room, boy. <laughs> Man, it was, it was so crazy because, okay, like, my relationship with Kobe started as all oh, hate. Like, <laughs> I, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I, I'm a huge <laughs> LeBron fan. Oh, man. And, you know, in the early years with LeBron coming into the league, yeah. it was always either or. You know, it couldn't. Oh, yeah, it, sure. wasn't, it wasn't like you could be both. Yeah, so, yeah. I, of course, I'm gonna choose LeBron. Mm -hmm. But, like, I remember I was on vacation and I went to my friend's house. He lived in Atlanta. Mm. And he showed me this the Kobe documentary. Yeah. You know, like I think it was like the Mamba or something like. Like mm. they were showing, they were showing everything. I don't even remember the name of it, but they yeah. were showing how he, you know, tore his ACL mm. and he was on the free throw line, still shooting, yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. baskets and how everybody had all this negative stuff to say and how they yeah. never thought he was gonna come back harder. You mm. know, it was just a lot of naysaying and how he just had that mentality like. Yeah. I don't care what y'all say. Yeah, I'm yeah. about to come I'm gonna get back through it. Harder, yeah, you know? for sure. And then it kind of made me appreciate, you know, the mama mentality oh, and yeah. appreciate Kobe. Because it's more than just basketball. More, exactly. Yeah. And then you see, like, all the impact that he had on, like, the women's mm -hmm. and, like, how he was with his kids. And that's what messed and me up. That's what the, the, the tear came down. Like, man. seeing the pictures with him as dark. Like, dang, like, I got was, a son that's 13. Was, yeah, so. it was crazy because... Like, a lot of people talk about Kobe need a son, Kobe need a son. Mm -hmm. You know, with their last daughter, they decided not to find out the sex of the baby at all until she had the baby. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And so everybody was expecting her to have a son, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And Kobe is, like, was very vocal and was like, I don't need a son. Yeah, you know, I got Gigi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for, like, her to be the only child that he has that was, like... Into basketball. Not even into basketball, Love, but, yeah. like, born for the Cause game. Because they say that that's like, the reason why he, you know, he stayed away from basketball. It wasn't until she was like, let's go to some games, yeah. that he got back into the league. Right. That's what I think was dope, yeah. honestly, is he wasn't forcing her to do basketball yeah, yeah, or yeah. Pressuring, her, pressuring her to be that, you know. Because a lot of parents do. Right, exactly. You know? <laughs> and the fact that she just, she openly got into it, and then mm -hmm. he like, all right, I'm for it. You yeah. know, I got your back no matter what. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And resources, and, you know, he was just really spreading a lot of love. And mm -hmm. I was watching the game, mm -hmm. the Lakers game, when – LeBron passed him on the all time. Oh yeah, and he was, yeah, and that, that was, was crazy. Like such a big thing, you know, like. And then for that to be Philly, like, it wasn't at yeah, home. Yeah. You know, Philly's where Kobe's from, uh -huh. but Kobe still was like always so positive. And I remember like a week before I had watched the interview, or it was it was actually that night mm -hmm. I watched the interview with LeBron. He was talking about how everybody always wanted him and Kobe to be against each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they was really good friends. Yeah, exactly. And they was like, oh, you know, Kobe tweeted this to you. Yeah. And, you know, they talking to him about it. And he talking about how Kobe changed his life. Yeah, you know, yeah. Because they talking about the shoes he got that was too small, but yeah, he still wore exactly, them. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And then it's like the next day. Yeah, that's that's the wild like, thing about the, it. Like Literally the next. Like, I stay up in the, the Lakers games. is always so late. Yeah, but I be so mad about that, yes. too. Because I love the Lakers. Like, damn. I'm gonna be sad. I literally. Like I, I got on Facebook and somebody said Kobe was dead and I was like, up. Oh. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Yeah. People be killing people all the time. Oh yeah. You oh, know? yeah I'm oh, like, yeah. I don't. I'm not gonna believe this. Nope, I'm like, let nope. me. <laughs> and I was like, like I said, what? Super loud. And he was like, what's going on? And I'm like, you know, let me check first yeah, yeah. before I even, you know, put this out into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And then I got on Twitter because yeah. Twitter is they give you news. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they gonna show you what's up. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and TMZ I'm, pretty accurate. Besides the are, Lil Wayne, they they did report that Lil Wayne died. I don't know oh, if y'all remember. Oh, but you know what? He was unresponsive though. Yeah, he had yeah, a yeah. Seizure, but but that's why I say with TMZ, it. sometimes you give it a little time to chill, like you right. know, because you know you don't know a family finding out before they even, you know, what I'm saying from TMZ, like. Yeah. I want to. 
know who they and sources are, yeah, man. Like, like, they always get they the first If somebody get hurt here, they a talk, camera gonna pop up from TMZ. They, they, they talked about how the LA culture, like, they know that if you have a breaking story like that and you go to TMZ that you're gonna get paid. Yeah. So it's not really like they have a team of people. It's just like the reputation and like the medical hospitals or mm. like first responders and stuff yeah. like that. Those are the people that's leaking the information to yeah, them because they're looking dirtier. for a payday. Yeah. Or worse. Yeah, yeah. so it, like, yeah, some, yeah. like, Action needs to be yeah. made, like you yeah. know. So, and on Twitter, they was killing so many. That day, yeah. it was like all four of his daughters was on. Yeah, board, the, the wife. Yeah, I'm board. like, I what? was like, so then, then they I'm say, all, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. Oh, no. But like, then they had said that um, I guess they made a pet that like if they do fly on a helicopter, one of them got to yeah, stay. You know I what I'm saying? That. Yeah, they made so, an agreement that they I mean, would fly to. I mean, it's just it's just messed up, man. Like. She 13. That's the same age as my son. I got a 13 year old. I'm like, damn, it's just, it's crazy. Like, how old are you guys? I'm, I just turned 30. Okay, so you was, yeah, so I grew up with Kobe. Watch yeah. it, man. I'm I'll, about to return to uh, 29 this year. Oh, so yeah, yeah. So, right like, now. Kobe came in the league at, what, 96? I was in the, yeah. what, fifth grade. So, it was like, I, of course, MJ, I, I always felt he was the best player, but. Kobe is the who I grew up with. Him, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I seen Kobe like I remember my mom buying me a Shaq jersey instead of Kobe. I'm getting pissed off like, damn, mom, yeah. come on, man. man. This big ass 34 on my chest like I won number eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because I was telling, I think I was telling Kyle like the first basketball game I ever remember mm -hmm. seeing and watching was the finals with Allen Iverson and Kobe. Oh yeah, 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 and yeah. Everybody in my house is like. Let's go, Kobe. Let's go, Kobe. And I was like, man, forget that. I want Allen Iverson to win. Man, you know? let me tell you, I lost so much money when the Pistons beat the Lakers that year. Man, I loved it. Oh, my God. I ain't going to lie. I didn't even <laughs> expect it. that, like, man. that happen, like, Man, especially when, the way they did it, though. Like, yeah, they almost swept them. And then the, the only reason they didn't, because Kobe hit that one game when this. I know, but yeah. that one was iconic, too. Yeah, man. But I, I, that's why it was, like, always fueling my Lakers hate fire. Like, <laughs> <laughs> See, I've been Lakers fans yeah. since, since down their birth. Cause my dad, he loved the Pistons, but his second team was the Lakers. Mm -hmm. So when I came up, I'm like, I like the Lakers. Like, I like Nick Van Essel. I like Eddie Jones. Then Shaq come, okay, bet. Kobe come, oh, he gonna be, he gonna be a truth. He 18 coming out of high school. Like, right. all right, bet. He ain't a guard. I mean, the Lakers is all have always been kind of like a celebrity team. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Like they just so popular. It's kind of like the Patriots, you know? Yeah, yeah. I hate always, the Patriots. Oh my god. But they always <laughs> got like an all star team. You yeah. know, like they haven't really. I mean, now, but. Back then, yeah, you know, yeah. they had Rick Fox and Derek yeah. Fisher when he yeah. was hot. Kobe, Shaq. Yeah. Then they went to the park. Man, and saw don't Aaron forget about Bob. Robert Ory. Yeah, Robert oh, Ory, yeah. Right, boy. he got the most Big rings. Big Bob, yeah, man. man. He got the most he rings. Yeah. The clutch, so it's like, like, that's why I hate these fake Laker fans. Like, come on, man. <clears throat> yeah, the big like, way. I was riding with them when we first got Lonzo Ball. I was pissed. Like, when we just, when Kobe and them was on those terrible teams with, you know, Kwame Brown. And, <laughs> man, he just, turned them teams around, yeah, though. That's yeah. a crazy thing. Kobe yeah. wasn't a loser. That's the thing. And then think, I hate when people compare uh, Kobe and LeBron. They're two different players to me. Even Definitely. LeBron and Mike, like, they're two different players. If you want to compare anybody, you can always compare Jordan and Kobe because Kobe mimicked his game. You feel me? So, it's like, with Magic, with Magic I compare Magic to, like, LeBron. That's what a lot of people do. You know, yeah, but, I, I like I that. that yeah. I, I haven't actually ever heard that, but yeah. I like that. I, yeah, yeah, a lot of yeah. Yeah. Cause to me, analysts, like, analysts, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jordan is my favorite player ever. Dennis, Dennis, uh, Kobe, and then, I, but LeBron, like, he is the best player as an overall package. Like yeah. nobody can do what he He's can do. He's well rounded. Like you, you big as a power forward. You fast as a point guard. Like you could do everything on the court. You make your teammates better. Like right, the team exactly. he took to the finals that year when they beat the Pistons was trash. Like you had a terrible Booby Gibson and fuck Eric <laughs> Snow. Like you had a bad, bad team, man. Yeah, they got swept though. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. They got, they, that's what they <laughs> got. The Mavericks, so, that was the first time I cried at a finals game. I was like, dang, the Mavericks just swept them. Man, I ain't cry about some ridiculous stuff about basketball. Like <laughs> I don't even name the things I cry about with basketball. Like I ain't got punched in my face by my mom because of basketball. Oh wow. Because the Lakers were getting their ass whooped by the Spurs, and my mom told me something like, "Mom, just shut up. Let me watch the game." Ooh. Ooh, yeah, I, got about, I got about. I got a good three piece hey, real quick. Like, <laughs> I got a good three piece real quick, man. So we can get back to sports, but I want to talk about y'all come up. You know, what I'm saying like as some youngins, how was it growing up? Y'all grew up in Detroit, East Side, West Side suburbs. Like, how was it growing up? I guess I'll start. <laughs> uh, I'm from Detroit. I'm from the West Side. Mm -hmm. My come up was a struggle. Like, okay. I grew up in the struggle, struggle. Like, <clears throat> What part of West Side? Like, where at? Because I'm just getting used to the West Side now. Okay, so I I started off, like, in a new center area, like, okay, by yeah. the Fisher Building. Okay. 
And then I lived I lived in that area for like 14 years. Mm. Then I moved around a lot and I ended up like on Dexter, like in okay. the Dexter area for a long time. Yeah, like yeah, I yeah. lived right between Dexter and Linwood. I went to Northwestern. I graduated from Northwestern. Okay. So yeah. That's oh, what year you graduated from Northwestern? In 08. 08, 08, 08. Yeah, oh, when yeah. we won the city championship. So you y'all had coach my, my dog Coach Brooks was Co- there. No, Coach Hall was our coach. Okay, I knew a little girl went there named Kyrie. Yeah, Coach, Cray- <laughs> coach Creighton was our football coach and Coach Hall was our basketball coach. Okay, okay. We won the cities in both. Okay. And then we lost in the States to King, but that was some janky stuff. Yeah, that's his, that's his team. <laughs> <laughs> that was jank. They was, I ain't going to get started on that. But, yeah, like, uh, I grew up. Uh, my mom has five kids. Okay. I'm the second of five. Uh, is I got one older sister and three younger brothers. Mm-hmm. We was poor when I grew up. Mm-hmm. But it kind of just made me a hustler. Like, I've yeah. always been about that money. Like, that's why my friends call me cash. <laughs> like, yeah. I just learned. Like, I started my first business when I was in third grade. So oh, What was that? I had a candy store. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> now, when before we get to um, for Kyle, like, when you say y'all was struggling, like, what's the worst time you can remember, like, y'all struggling? With me, I remember my, we had to stay inside my um, my, my dad friend attic for, like, a month, like... I, mean, I remember like just moving that night before you get your, you know, what I'm saying your your stuff kicked out the apartment. Like, what's the one time you like? Cause as little as little kids, you really don't know the struggle. Mm-hmm. Like, you think everything is just cool, whatever. Like, what was one time you like you did realize like, dang, we we going through something right now? Okay, so basically, like you know how I said I lived in the same area for like 14 years. Mm-hmm. So after we moved from that area, we moved to this one house that was, that was between 12th and 14th. Okay. And I know you you say you don't even know the West Side. I know a little bit. All the West Side listeners, y'all know what I'm talking about. (laughs) So, (laughs) anyway, so this, like, I don't know what was going on at this time, but we literally had no gas, (laughs) no water. Like, like, one thing me and my sister always kind of agree on, like, our most struggling time Mm. was when we was, like, sleeping in. Sleeping in sleeping bags. Yeah. Our heat was from the fireplace, and we literally had like a big jar, yeah. a garbage like a garbage bin, uh-huh. and we went to the neighbors like outside faucet to fill it with water. Like, oh damn! Yeah. Yeah, it was a struggle. I'm about to say like, we had water, but we had to boil it though. Like, but, we <laughs> but like we had to steal water yeah, and yeah. Then boil it. So it was like, man. <laughs> <laughs> As a kid, you like, why? Why yeah. is this happening to me? And but you, you gotta catch the bus to school every day. Still, yeah, like, oh, cold as hell. Exactly. Oh it my was god. The worst. It but was the worst. those times prepare you though for when you get older. If it don't, then something wrong with you. Like yeah. for real, because that that's just feel you. Like man, like I'm gonna make sure like when I get older, my kids don't go through this. I don't go right. through this. Like because I mean, it was like step. It's like stepping stones because you hear people talk about like the struggle and people like, yeah, I used to heat up my whole house with the oven. I'm yeah. like, oh yeah, that was fun before I get yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cause I remember we had no refrigerator. We used to hear my dad buying ice and putting inside the cooler and stuff like. Yeah, exactly, man. like we didn't have no like stove. I would learn how to make then, scrambled eggs in like, microwave. My like, son like, got it made. Cause my son <laughs> told me the other day, like, yeah, people in my school think I, to me, I got a rich vibe. Like I'm always happy. I'm always got new shoes. I'm a like, rich vibe. <laughs> I'm like, what? I can't wait for my daughter to say that. Man, a real like rich vibe. But yeah, they say I'm always happy. I'm always fresh. This, that, and the third hair always crispy. Shoes like. I might boy, you just don't know. Though, but the thing is, like, one thing I realized, especially with me and Kyle being together, and you'll hear more because we come from like different lifestyles. Like, people will try to make you feel bad yeah, for, for being in a not a good situation, yeah. Position, but it's like you need to be happy that your parents decided mm-hmm. to like put invest that time into you and yeah. invest that time into themselves to give you a better life like mm-hmm. i'm not gonna fault nobody for being able to take care of their family because yeah, yeah. when i was a kid i'm up here like <laughs> you got five kids why you ain't stopping me yeah. you know like you know i'm like man <laughs> oh man I'm yeah bad. man like, we was doing fine you know man <laughs> like i my my my, my fiance her stepdad be like dog you should make a movie like i'd be like dog we, about your life yes oh, we, that's what i be saying man so I need to write a book or we've something. been through it i ain't seen my dad rob people like <laughs> Like just just for us to have just for us to have a, a rent money or food or clothes on our back. I never went without shoes. I never went without clothes. But we have went without like you said heat, water, cable. Like right. cable wasn't even such thing. Like exactly. we had cable until I was like fifteen. Yes, it's funny. Like, <laughs> let, me tell, let me tell you this funny story real quick. So I used to work. Uh, I used to work for this company, right? And I was like, <laughs> I was like going hard. Like I used to be like number one, number two, like in the state, in the, mm. like, everything. And this girl, she was like, 
Ashley, you always like working so hard. You always grinding. What like what motivates you all the time? She white, by the way. Yeah. I'm like, you know, <laughs> I was like, I grew up poor, you know, yeah. so that kind of motivated me. Like now that I got this opportunity to actually get my hands on some real money. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna let that up. And she was like. Oh, I completely understand. I remember we grew up and we didn't have cable. I was like, girl, I didn't have lights. You yeah, know, like cable. cable. Man, man. You don't understand. And you don't know, understand them, them cable channels. You're going to watch about five of them. Like, I mean, the regular channels. Right. You got to have an antenna. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We just talking about that. Well, what was that one jump? Um, uh, uh, school, the school bus, Magic school yeah, bus? Magic school oh, bus, and I used to watch that. And all Arthur, 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 yeah, 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 Power Rangers, the original Power Rangers. Right. Like, people don't know they had Black Power Rangers, like Aisha had took the one girl spot. Like, right. man, I, knew about I, know, all that. I saw a little clip on Twitter that they had him <laughs> dancing and fighting. <laughs> yeah, so what about you, Kyle? Man, how would you, how would you grow up? Uh, complete opposite, <laughs> uh, to Ashley. I actually grew up in Nova my pretty much my entire life, okay. Uh, went to uh, uh, Catholic school, mm-hmm. uh, pretty much all the way up until college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's about it, really. Nothing excited. Nothing excited. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. oh, mom or dad? Mom. Okay, okay. Well, dad, oh, they had fell out or? Uh, or you... just, I just wasn't there. Really. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. He was. He was. Uh, I mean, he was in jail at the time too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's. that's so then, I mean, for you to have like a single parent living in Nova, like your mom had to be doing some things then, like make yeah. some moves. Yeah, yeah, that's she what's was up. always working. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, was you um being out in Nova from Nova? You from Nova, right? Yeah. So was you ever like in the city or like when you do come to the city, like damn, this it's crazy. <laughs> like if I like like my cousin, he lives like uh. Like on the bridge of like Warren in Detroit, so I yeah. like always go over there most of the time. But yeah. it wasn't like it, it'd just be like a normal day. Like yeah. it was like it was no kids that ever played with and no vibe. Like yeah. so, like yeah. anytime <laughs> I come to the city, everybody there to play with. So I didn't, you know, yeah. I never saw like like any difference. Like yeah. I just saw like it's people I could be around. Yeah, you yeah, know, exactly. And be yeah. myself around. So like, like so, uh, cause I know you probably went to like mostly white school, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, me, I went to um Detroit Public School until seventh grade. Thanks to my mom, I got kicked out because they found out I moved to Harper Woods. Mm-hmm. So I had oh. to go to Gross Point schools. Oh. And it was like, my first day in there, I'm like, I cried. I went home like, Mom, take me out this shit. Like, I don't see no black people. Like, everybody in this boy is white. I got one black person and maybe one class. And she's like, you going to catch the bus? Like, all right, I go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like catching no bus. So, like, 8th grade, ninth grade, and 10th grade, I went to a suburban school. And it was, like, totally different. I'm happy I was able to experience that, but... At first, it was like, man, this is crazy. Like, yeah. I never seen as many white people besides TV or something. Like, it's funny because I literally just wrote a poem about that because my daughter goes to all white school. Yeah, it's so different. Man, it's, it's so different, but it's so much better though. Like, as far as like the curriculum, the classes, the the, the books, what they like you, yeah. you have a book that you got. And but it sucks. That it has to be that way. Yeah, like, you literally yeah. gotta go of, that route yeah, for you right. just to get those type of educational tools. Yeah, and man. That's really the real thing that my mom stressed. Like, like the resources they yeah. provide. Like, like you that was some so of my much. best education. But it's mm-hmm. it puts so an like impact culture, on your culture. social yeah. skills at the same time. I would yeah. say. So you think it's like hurting you, like me, like other you know black dudes or whatever? Like, no, just, I would say not. Not as an adult, but yeah, seriously, as yeah. As a kid, transition, especially in a high school phase, yeah. it definitely. I, f- yeah. I feel like it definitely put a toll on like my social skills and the yeah. way I interacted with people. Oh yeah, was like, would you ever like nervous? Like, damn, I don't, you know, I want to make sure I'm cool over here. Yeah, but, well, it's just like shoot, it's like a couple. <laughs> black people at the yeah. school so like you know as long as I'm cool with them yeah. and they see how I'm like you know but this whole other you know group of black people out here in the world yeah. I don't know how what they think about exactly. me so you, like, know. you know what I'm saying cause then you got it's, it's messed up you got questions like damn am I black enough for you know what I'm saying like oh yeah. yeah one of my favorite lines from her like most recent work is sometimes you will be too black for your white friends and sometimes you will be too white for your yeah. black friends Hell, that's yeah. like the realest thing that yeah. I feel personally I've gone through so much yeah, so yeah. I, that's like why I could relate and yeah. why her poem about uh, her daughter Kennedy uh, why it just hit it hit yeah. so much like yeah, I yeah. performed that poem recently at like a, a black history and black love performance and mm-hmm. a lot of people came like yeah. a lot of people came up to me <laughs> like I just had to take my daughter out of an all white school because she was experiencing what she was talking about mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I used to do this I like it's just so hard because yeah. I'm like 
I'm like a black power person. <laughs> yeah. I love black people. Hell I yeah, love sure. Detroit. Like, I'm a ride or die for the D. Mm -hmm. Like, but I don't live in Detroit no more mm -hmm. because... I can't have my daughter in DPS with it crumbling the way it is. Yeah, yeah, it you is. Know, it because is. it's my responsibility to make sure that she gets a quality education because her sure. being black is already going to be unfair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, the best thing I can do is get her into, like, the, the school that she goes to is, like, she goes to a charter school, but it was, mm. like, one of the, like, one year they was, like, number two in the state okay, okay. for, like, education. So I drive her, like, a far distance yeah, to take her to school. Yeah. But when you look at, like, the stuff that she's doing, like there are, she's in first grade and they're mm. already doing like, they got books and books to read. They yeah. do fractions. And yep, I was yep. like, was I doing fractions in first grade? Like, <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> I don't recall doing, you know, like, and you just look at like all the stuff that they're requiring and even options like, um, like now that we live out in the suburbs, like she, she does gymnastics, she yep, does ballet yep. And the prices that they have out there are so affordable. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is crazy because if she was at another studio out in any other city. Yeah, it'd be paying her my way. Yeah. You know, and she got involved in that thing because, like, when she was out in daycare in her first year at the school that she goes to now, they had those opportunities. So she's been in gymnastics since she was, like, two or three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know other places in the city they don't even have like when you in daycare no. they not saying like hey yeah. do your daughter want to do a dance class yeah, while she in daycare they just know? watching them like that's <laughs> it <They're> just, <laughs> and barely exactly, yeah, they like, just running around like hey boy exactly, Tommy right? sit down boy <laughs> sit down <laughs> so like when I realized cause I think that was the first thing like I realized that the daycare that she was going to it was it was expensive like, yeah, yeah it was like 900 plus a month yeah oh and, yeah Oh you man, know, it, and you know, I'm complaining about like, 128 a month. I mean, a week. What? Well, no, <laughs> I was paying, exactly. I was paying 900 dollars a month for her to go to daycare. Wow. And like, once I started realizing all the other parents that was going there and mm -hmm. what they did, you know, yeah. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. this is where y'all sending y'all kids yeah, to, yeah, you yeah, know, because yeah. you gotta somebody put you on, you know, because you. One thing I learned, especially this week, is so many opportunities for us to further ourselves. But you don't but know. You, literally don't yeah, know like I just, did, I just did a vending event in tech town on friday okay it's free yeah they provide you with a setup mm -hmm. and they're bringing the people you know so yeah, basically yeah, yeah. all you have to do they, is they bring, bring a product your pro exactly yeah. and once that once you're there they like interview all the people they're like what are your goals what are yeah. you trying to get to we have free resources come mm -hmm. this day come this day and i'm like this is a organization that's in Detroit that mm. helps grow Detroit businesses or help you launch a business mm. if you're looking to be in Detroit. It's literally an all white organization. Yeah. And they're right in the heart of Detroit. Mm. And you know, supposedly helping people. I mean, they are helping people. I ain't gonna say supposedly, but they're helping people. But it's like so many black people that have no idea. Yeah, about you don't because you gotta do the research. You gotta really look because ain't nobody and ain't nothing posted. You know that. Hey, come here, come here. Like they ain't getting advertised because at the end of the day, they don't want to really see you. You know, saying make it or nothing like that. Like it don't cost nothing to help somebody or give somebody some information or something like right. that. Right. Because I remember just going like we um. We, like I said earlier, we got AAU team, and we practice out in West Bloomfield. And me and uh, my, uh, my producer walk inside, and I'm like, damn, this, this is a middle school. It looked like a, uh, like a high, damn near college. Like, so you got to understand, you walk into that energy, you already feel like, okay, I want to be here. Mm -hmm. And opposed to going to Detroit Public School, and you got to go through a metal detector, maybe. Right. Or you looking at books, and you open a book up, your mama naming the book from 86. Like, damn, we got the same yeah. book. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, Patricia Wilson, like auntie, like <laughs> man. So it's like just stuff like that. Like it just, it just crazy. When my son, um, uh, when we went moved to Texas, we was in like the super suburbs. Like he was doing, like, it was like three black kids in the school. And we moved back here. I made sure I kept him in kind of that same type of environment. So his mm -hmm. school was kind of like half and half. He got it's more white people, but some black people in there too. Mm -hmm. So I have him there and then we play basketball and stuff like that in the inner city and my family still stay in the inner city a little bit so he kind of know how to like adjust on both ends so I'm mm -hmm. glad he was able to see that early age and also be able to still be on quote unquote black side you know what I'm saying so <laughs> he was able to you know feed off both of them his oh that's a question I got for y'all 
You you have you have, both of you you guys have kids or just kidding? Yeah. How would you feel? I took my son. He has um two best friends that he go over a uh, black kid. He go over his house and then white kid. So I drop him off over his white friend house and I look and see that they have a Confederate flag Ooh, on the no car. Way. Oh, that's a no go. No. So I was wrong. That's huh? a no go. It's yeah. not happening. I'm sorry. That's a no Because, I, like, I'm sorry. He just got sick in the car. He got no. the stomach flu. Yeah. He constipated, like, whatever. Yeah. We, yeah. we, so we gotta I go. Don't, I don't tolerate <clears throat> racist white people yeah. at all. I'm very vocal about that. I don't, mm. like, I don't do that. No. Yeah. It's because like, if I pulled up to their house, mm. I would probably confront them at yeah. the door and let them yeah, know yeah, why yeah. my son is not about to be there. Because it's, it's like, her, it's her mom crib, and I guess that's her boyfriend. He don't live there, but it's like, you oh that's even more that. dangerous exactly. he uh, he uh, he for yeah. real unknown yeah. exactly. like she could be his boyfriend exactly. and know and so called know him but she yeah. don't really know the i feel like she don't know no a son mm. you know you have a black son yeah and you putting your son into that environment because i mean <laughs> the confederate flag of course like by definition it's about like resistance yeah, yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. and people like it's not it's not a beacon of hate but People use it as a beacon of hate, mm-hmm, you know, for sure. and they they want to show that they're not with the the unity, mm-hmm. you know. They they're still they still feel like segregation. They still yeah. feel like white people are, you know, the superior, yeah, exactly, the superior yeah, 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 yeah. race, you know. And so, why else do you have this flag? Yeah, like, what, no other what are you trying? What are you trying to portray? Mm-hmm. Like, let me know what you feel that makes you want to display this flag because. You can have an American flag if you, you know, yeah. that's what you're about. Yeah, you're pro-American, you know, yeah. If you, if you don't want to have... Because everyone knows that a Confederate flag is there for controversy. Oh, you yeah, know what I mean? Sure. It's a symbol. Shit, they're so, like the damn the, the Trump. Exactly. That's like, it's literally like... <laughs> Same thing, maybe. It's, you, well, you're it's really association. Show, exactly. Yeah, I think about a Trump hat, I'm thinking about a Confederate flag. Yeah, for honest. sure. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And just the fact, like, a lot of people in America... They just see black men as a threat, mm-hmm. you know, and it doesn't matter how old they are. I literally saw a video of a six-year-old girl getting. I saw that. That was that was nasty, hell, man. You know? That was and, that was crazy. And that just shows you that they don't have respect for us as a community. So I would never want to put my son into an environment yeah. where her boyfriend comes home. And now he's picking with your son. Yeah, you know, yeah. he asking him and questions. Like I said, they shouldn't be asking. I'm like, you're not there to, yeah, to supervise to, to be able, or yeah, protect him. Yeah, so, and that's her boyfriend. And if anything goes down, who's she going to choose? Yeah, so we we drop him off because it's a big sleepover and stuff. Like, like he, he, he invited his closest friends. So I'm pulling him like, damn, what the, what do I do? Like, but did you know any other people that was there? Like any other I know, kids? Uh, yeah, because they played basketball in the little league and stuff. Like it was one black kid besides my son. That's so, what I was gonna be my next question. Yeah. I was gonna say how many other but, black kids. But let me tell you. So I go pick my son up the next day, and um, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to the door and stuff. He like, man, your kid just is an amazing kid. Like he was just so cool, and I'm like, so you expect him to be something different because he was black? Like, exactly. You expect him to be an animal or something coming this boy just it, going crazy, tearing up furniture like a pit bull? Like, exactly. And so, like, really- I question myself. I don't know. that they, they real good friends, so, I mean, I know the kid, you know, you only born to, you know, who your parents mm-hmm. is. You can't right. choose that. So, but it's still like, dang, like. But if someone the- says that, Yo, kid was so amazing. It's like you said, yeah, like, well, what the f did you expect? Yeah, like, like, <laughs> like that's that kind of that's rude. Yeah, hell, yeah. like and to also, be like, man. Also, like, yeah. we just have to remember that hate is passed down. That's something that's taught. You know what For I mean? Sure, yeah. So, like the fact that he is okay with having that Confederate flag displayed. You know, his son is there. His son might ask, like, why do we have this flag? Mm-hmm. And what do you think he's telling him? You know, he's exactly, probably, yeah, he's probably telling point. him, like, because white people are better than, you Black know, like, yeah, I don't know what he's saying, but that's the conversation. I mean, you can't assume with that being exactly, there, yeah. Exactly. Shooting low key, he doesn't even have to say anything. Kids just pick up on parents' traits. Exactly. Yeah. They're literally yeah. used to seeing them do things their yeah. entire, like, life. Yeah. Or if you look at other association, when you associate a Confederate flag with any other thing, when you look at the media mm-hmm. and all the other things that's associated with that, what else are you going to expect? Like, when yeah. you do, like, shout up school or shop the church you know they showing pictures of they Facebook yeah, 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 yeah. with Confederate all type flags, of, yeah, you know? yeah. I never seen so many Confederate flags that I moved to Texas man like oh yeah that's uh that was a crazy <laughs> I ran I ran past a few Confederate flags when I was in college cause yeah. I was I was running cross country in Adrian oh, uh, yeah. Michigan oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like in the sticks yeah so nah, <laughs> I was, after that I, I ran near campus I was not going uh, super so far be, be, away before we go to our next thing man it's something I was thinking about as far as like Black History Month and stuff like that like do y'all do do you think it should even? I mean, of course, of course. Like, do you think it should even? You think it's disrespectful just to be a month? 
And you think it's like with the schools just teaching it for that month, like that's kind of disrespectful because for the most part, when you do have Black History Month in school, you only learn about the typical Martin Luther King, Rosa, Rosa Parks. Park, yeah. That's about it. Like Jackie Washington Robinson. Carver, yeah. Washington Carver, Obama but, now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like it never go, goes anywhere farther than that. Like, how do y'all feel about the actual Black History Month before we move on with uh, our next questions? I love Black History Month because, <laughs> like, the, <laughs> the first thing I posted for Black History Month was a video of <laughs> these two white ladies that was, like, crossing the finish line. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I saw, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had them, yeah, like, hiking, like, 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 non-black companies like google mm. they they take the responsibility of spreading the word about black culture mm. so you know i think it is helpful but i think going forward us as a community we need to start pushing yeah like i think in the month of february we need to decide to collectively come together to try and like make some things happen and not rely on the schools we really and, don't we yeah. really don't do anything like it's okay for us to like bask in our history and remind our children you know what we came from and stuff for this mm. month but like we still got laws discriminating against black hair like that's not cool we need to yeah. like mobilize yeah, cause I, mean, I don't know if you've seen that, that that thing with the referee made the, the dude cut his dreads off like yeah, i don't that was cr like that was <laughs> you might get pissed off let me go in this <laughs> uh, yeah man, that was that was stuff, that was terrible though seeing like stuff like that really drives me crazy and then nobody in the crowd head. actually stopping and like hold on this is stupid like what the hell is you doing right like, everybody looking at like, all like right. where was his parents at? yeah you know like i would I, no yeah I, we gonna have to forfeit like no or show me in a rule book where it shows this that yeah. you know like it's stuff like that that we need to kind of like maybe we should have like marches in yeah. you know mar like a march in february just do something you know mm -hmm. do something more than just posting black history facts every month or you know wearing a thing or like performing <laughs> yeah. about black history you know i just think we need to do more yeah yeah then my son got something from school like the 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 project not doing till March 13th, like, dog, why y'all ain't do this in February? Like, you just got it man, today. That's, that's, that's crazy. crazy. What about like you, man? 365. Yeah, what about you with the, uh, you know, you say you go, you, you from Nova, like, yeah. as far as black history, how was y'all getting taught in school back it then? It wasn't really, like, that's not yeah. even black history month. They not really teaching that. And yeah. even I know that's a fact because even they not bringing, they not telling Kennedy any of that. Yeah. Grant, get, granted, she's young, but still, yeah. like, you should be providing some type of information. Mm, it doesn't matter what age the child is. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, just... They, it's like they, they didn't do nothing man i'm telling you like for real i done seen literally they'll throw like one little homework assignment like all right black history month is it, this yeah, month yeah, what like we'll that. be doing is you're gonna do a project on any black history okay. person of yeah. your choice yeah. uh and you could write a report tell what they did yeah. what they influenced it's just like some yeah, typical yeah, little yeah. you know summarize yeah. summarize somebody you find yeah. like that's right. all exactly, like exactly. it's not something like you know like uh let's go do this let's make an impact I will say this, though. Uh, going to a Catholic school, it was numerous occasions where on MLK Day, because uh, if I didn't have it off, it, it changed so many times yeah, within it, my... No, I thought it was the only school. My school didn't have every Martin Luther King Day off. No, it, it kept changing. Change. It, it was flip-flop And we had to take the midterms MLK day, on Martin Luther King Day. We took the midterm, so they, we had to come. The holiday is different from MLK birthday. Like, oh, yeah, for sure. Like, they made the yeah, national yeah. holiday one day, and it'd be it's weird, because it seemed like... They have it like the second Monday of January, or something mm -hmm. like that, instead of like always when January fifteenth. Yeah, on his like birthday, yeah. yeah. But like we'll do like volunteer work. That's the one thing I would say was like mm -hmm. that was helpful. But mm -hmm. like it wasn't like we was doing volunteer work for black people. Not to be like yeah, rude. Yeah, yeah. It was just like volunteer work, <laughs> volunteer yeah. work. Like it ain't like it was like <laughs> centered towards play. like yeah. Black History Month volunteer work. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It. it yeah. So you think no. it's more it's more so should be on us to go ahead and teach that 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 those Black History moments to our kids instead of relying on the on the school Absolutely, system. Absolutely, hundred percent. I think it should be. I think the school should take more responsibility mm -hmm. to like to make it like in the like. Okay, this plain and simple. They need to change the history books and include some stuff that's other than slavery because <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, it really irritated that. me because it was like a statement by the Na by NASA and they was talking about how people are talking about hidden figures so much this year and they never talked about it before like. Mm -hmm. Duh! And somebody was like, "Duh! Y'all don't want hiding the figures, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? Sure. Y'all didn't tell anybody yeah. that it was these black ladies that made all this possible. So mm -hmm. don't be 
upset that now we're realizing, you know, that we made this happen. Yeah. And so it's stuff like that that's hidden. Like mm. y'all knew. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all knew for sure. Mm. Like y'all knew and y'all didn't y'all didn't want to publicize that. You know, you wanna hide that accomplishment under mm. somebody else and give that credit to somebody yes. else. And yeah, so yeah, I yeah. feel like they need to do a better job of like the education process mm. because when you look at a history book like you said you know about George Washington Thomas yeah. Jefferson all these random white people that really was you know all for slavery oh, yeah, and for sure. colonizing people yeah, you yeah. know and they wasn't actually helping America move further when you mm. actually look at the people who actually progress America forward at the at the core of that is a black person yeah, yeah, in yeah. most stories like yeah, for, for you know, sure. that's, like, that's the truth you know, cause like we without in, us this, this shit wouldn't even, even exactly. be around like Remember, for real like for when real. we was in elementary <laughs> school they used to run those ass like a day without black people, yeah. you wouldn't be able to do this, 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 you know? Nothing. And I feel like it still needs to be up to the people that's writing these books that's educating people to mm. put them, put those people in. Like, black narratives need to be told a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not, it shouldn't just all be on us. It's time for white people to get involved and be honest about, and be honest yeah. about what our history really looks like. Oh, yeah. But that's not going to happen if we don't demand it. No, no, no. Who's somebody you feel like nowadays is going to be in the books as far as, like, when they be talk to, when they talking about black history? I feel like somebody like LeBron James, what he doing? Like I respect the hell out of him for with That's the my school. Role model. Yeah, even though I never been a LeBron fan, I'm not a hater. He great, but I just never been a fan. But That's, I'm a fan of everything he does. That's my though. role model. Like me, and, <laughs> me and LeBron, we both Capricorns. <laughs> birthday January 30th. Like, yeah. I mean December 30th. He a Capricorn. Yeah. Like he definitely he's, the truth though. He, I feel like he's just really a stand up person from what the media portrays him like he is a faithful you know husband he's the father to his kids yeah, they don't talk about that he goes all. back to his community and yep. gives back all the time and it just shows you how much you know you actually can make a difference because this is only one person mm -hmm. that has you know a school that he opened in his community mm -hmm. that's doing well mm -hmm. all, everyone has an option to go to a four-year college that he yep. has like a partnership with now and they really don't have to struggle. They have really high graduation rates. And you you just look like, this is one person out of mm. one team yeah. in the so NBA. Imagine everybody, you know, exactly. Yeah. So if Cause matter of fact, that's what uh, for, it, Waka Flock, Flock said some stuff that made sense the other day. I seen an interview. He's like, why don't these black dudes, all these rich dudes just come together and make one label? Like, with all this money, you got, you know, the Diddy's, the the Birdman's, the Master P's. Right, because like, why, 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 yeah. be why we got to be under Def Jam and Universal mm. when you got, you know, like, like, Type, you know, you don't have to be Rock Nation, don't have to be under Def Jams, you know what I mean? Be, like, anybody, yeah, y'all can go ahead and just come in together. I think they tried that before with, um, but they stopped it. That's when they did the whole little thing with, uh, who my man, Irv Gotti. Mm. Irv Gotti tried to do so with him, Jay Prince, and somebody else, but that's when they put those, those, uh, they they had whatever Earth guy was into it. You know, they got, yeah, they got. That's <laughs> 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 granddad upstairs cooking that stuff. <laughs> Real black bacon, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they stopped that whole thing from happening because they started throwing a book at people and trying to get them, you know, locked up or whatever. Right. So they stopped that. <laughs> I think that's when they got into that legal issue because, yeah. like, Ashanti was signed to them during that time, and that's uh -huh. like when they started getting investigated. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, they time is yeah. 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 So they were saying like that's they, when was, they got was, hit with the book, and yeah. that's when everybody under murder. Cover the night, low key before he got locked up. Irv Gotti, J yeah. Prince. But you know what? It, in those type of instances, you can't depend on people that started a legal to try and go legal and yeah, think that it's yeah. gonna be all cool like yeah. a lot of people think that like not to be like bringing up this controversial subject but a lot of people think that Bill Cosby was framed because he was trying to buy a network mm -hmm. you know it's a it's a lot of instances in the past where you see like a black person trying to make a power move mm -hmm. and then they get slapped they with lies yeah, yeah try to find somebody yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. so uh oh, stay on the music thing like and, and growing up like most times we don't grow up listening to you know the rap we listen to stuff our parents was playing what was some stuff that y'all moms was like feeding to y'all at an early age because with me i didn't start really listening to rap until i got older only rap that was being really played in my house was like tupac or whatever like that but for the most part i grew up on like the motown era yeah. like sade bob marley like yeah. my dad was the most racist person but listening <laughs> to the most whitest people though like uh -huh. <laughs> it'd be like the the beatles and that boy uh Good music you can't Sting. deny like it'd be like undeniable. yeah so like who who was y'all um listening to like our parents were listening to that kind of like with y'all introduction to music lauren hill the yeah. fugees baby face oh yeah baby face for sure like yeah, sade. i would say like it's all like, that r&b was like the thing back yeah, then, though, was, like it was. Take Six. I remember that group. 
uh, after seven, like uh, uh, SW, SWV Total and Escape is like the same people to me. For some reason, right. <laughs> like, they got the same yeah. vibe. Like it's like the song structure. Like my yeah. mom is a huge Prince fan. Oh, yeah, my dad. Like Prince. when Prince died, I had to call my mom, <laughs> and I was like, I know she's somewhere crying, yeah. and then she finally called, and she's like. <laughs> Man, thank you for calling me. I'm doing bad. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. That was her. That was her number one right there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's one dude who got all the ladies with his ass out in heels. Like, come on. <laughs> right, blouses. Like, right. come on, bro. Like, he was getting all the women I don't for know real. What he was doing? Man, Dave like, Chappelle had the funniest skit <laughs> on him and Michael Jackson. Man, man. <laughs> Dave Chappelle, that's a classic show, man. Duh. But yeah, like. So like what when y'all when did y'all start listening to like the type of music y'all wanted to listen to and not just what your mom was and dad was playing? Mm, I think when I start like middle school, high school kinda, mm -hmm. I started trying to I kinda like started to get my own like vibe. I remember one Christmas I asked for a CD. The CD I asked for was Ludacris, Red Light District. <laughs> Ludacris was... People sleep on Luda, dog. <laughs> He's, he was my favorite rapper. He's still one of the coaches. Like, I listen... Like, Man. Sometimes I go back and listen to his songs. That Back for the First Time album. Listen, oh, my God. Luda Chicken was, and Beer. Yeah. Luda was killing, dog. Like, I'm telling you. Man, like, low-key, now that I'm thinking about it, word of mouth is yeah, actually... I'm telling y'all. I heard it. And my cousin was listening to it, and it had he had a cussing. Like, his yeah. mom was allowing him to listen to cussing. I was like, yo, this is cool. Like, no. you know, like, so that's, I, I, I'm positive that was, like, the first, like, that's why I was like, oh, bump all this R&B and editing stuff. Man, let me I'm get some explicit what, content. I, that was my first favorite rapper was Ludacris. Like, I remember the first time I heard Splash Waterfalls without, Man. like, without the edit yeah, the, yeah like, like you talking crazy oh in that God. boy yeah I was like what and then Luda was, yeah. Luda was nice like people sleep on Luda think he was just some type of joke like no. who was the, so who was the first uh, what was the first city y'all y'all purchased with y'all own money uh oh man that's funny man man I think man. it was I think the first CD I purchased was uh T.I. Urban Legend oh yeah you I think that. I, I think I <laughs> I think yeah. I bought that CD myself what about you Kyle man I brought. I remember. I didn't buy a CD for myself. I bought a CD for a friend. It was a birthday <laughs> gift, but it was the edited version because my mom got me the CD. <laughs> she paid for the CD. It was. It was. Uh. It was an Eminem CD. Yeah. Uh. I can't remember if it was the Eight Mile soundtrack movie yeah. CD or if it was uh the Eminem show. Yeah. But I also yeah. remember I got a Missy Elliott CD with it. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Missy and Buster like the same dude, like the same man. person, like just a woman and man. For real. Like my first CD was uh Lil Wayne uh, Lights Out. Like mm. I was that was my introduction to rap was Cash Money. Really? Because, I like I like Cash yeah. Money. Yeah. So when I turned uh my mom got with her boyfriend, I was like thirteen or twelve and my brother was just clowning me for everything I did. My stepbrother, it was her his son. And he like, Man, you a lame ass like for the stuff I was listening to, I was listening to what was it, uh the answer to no scrubs, no pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> I was buying that the single like, oh this sweet right here. I remember that song. And then hilarious. you're like, no, you are lame, bro. Like you gotta get on this. So he had four hundred degrees juvenile. I'm like, dog, who oh, is this? Oh my gosh, he put like, you right in like, the this fire. Like, this is cold. Like, this is right. cold. So I started listening to that. And then I'm like, listen, Hot Boys. Like, dog, who is this dude? He the coldest. Wayne, yeah. I always thought Wayne was the coldest from the jump. So I'm like, all right, bet he had a block as hot. So I got some my my allowance. Went to go get lights out. Like, man, this nigga is the guy. Like, dog, like Lil Wayne man. was my first. Tupac was, you know, I'm biased because that was my dad, dude. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, Tupac's my favorite rapper. Still to this day, Tupac is the best rapper to me. But like I said with Kobe, I grew up with Lil Wayne. That's why I'm kind of mad how Lil Wayne is now. <laughs> but I, Lil Wayne was my dude, Lil man. Lil Wayne still got fired. I just said, I just he said. He do, this but it's he, like. He, he, he just rapping though now. Stuff. I feel you, but this is what you gotta look at, man. He it's like when somebody retire in the NBA. You know they just out there, yeah. but you know it's time to hang the shoes up. Mm -hmm. But you gotta give them the props for hanging out there. That's the thing. Like also, uh, Wayne versus still be fired though. Like, but that, but that's why I be fired yeah. versus every now. But and I then. feel I feel man I feel like what he's saying like yeah. he like. He ain't dropping like what he was yeah. dropping for the drought, I mean, no ceiling, like, like, like that. It's like every time he's doing my job, dedication, like, like what happened that. to his voice? Like it's like he put all two in his throat and just it's just there. Like, yeah, <laughs> like you know, he was taking so many drugs. Man. Wayne was the first person that started 
glamorizing drugs to me from yeah. what I was Him hearing. And you know? C, man. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. But Lil Wayne's like he birthed all these dudes, the Young Thugs, the Uzis. Like everybody, yeah. the way they rap, they got their style from Wayne. Because I think. Carter three was when he started changing his style. I love Carter three too. Yeah. The, all right. What's y'all? What's the best card between one, two, and three? Mm. Three for sure. I don't know. I gotta look at the track list. Okay. I'm gonna say three. three. I'm, not I'm gonna tell y'all this. Carter it's two one. or three, Wait, but one, for sure three. Which one three. is uh? Which one got go DJ on it? Carter one. Okay, that's it. Carter one got the, that whole that whole. All right. I'm gonna tell y'all this. Right. This I'm gonna tell y'all. Carter one got the best production. Carter two got the best flow, and Carter three got is when he just features. changed everything. Oh. Like Carter just, three was on oh, yeah, the radio. Like, yeah, Carter three was a, a radio album to me. Nah, because there was some stuff that Fire didn't hit the radio still. that was cold. Everybody, look, y'all gotta know this was this was my senior <laughs> high school when when Carter three came out. Like Lollipop, Fireman, yeah, 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 like yeah. all them songs was was hitting the radio. Like and this Wayne was doing all them features. He had yeah, like he did. can't he believe did. it with T Pain. Yeah. You know, like they supposed to drop an album. Him and Joel Santana supposed to drop the album. Oh, like, I used to love Joel Santana. He's well, I, I fell off. My favorite, <laughs> my favorite dipset was Jim Jones. <laughs> No, I love U.S. Santana. Jim Jones got hard. Santana yeah. had the best flow. Uh, Jim I've never Jones, been a Jim Jones fan. I, I love Jim Jones music, man. Holy. <laughs> that, that song changed his life, boy. But man, yeah, so... Uh, real. <laughs> and that was the end, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, they had a good run. Like, yeah. they all... Like, all the dips that, like, Cameron favorite, had his run. Cameron, you know, Suckin' or Not is still one of my favorite songs. Like, somebody actually yeah. posted and was like... If somebody had a gun to your head and told you to spit a Wayne verse, what would you pick? And I'm like, I'm going to spit. So Man. you're not <laughs> Wayne verse. <laughs> yeah, Wayne was Wayne. But so who was a rapper y'all like back then? And like, damn, he was trash. Trash. I, 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 hmm. I, I leave them franchise boys. Man, <laughs> man. If you think it back then, though, I wouldn't think they was trash because yeah. everybody was getting hyped to them. Yeah, so, no, I, can't, I can't say they man. was trash. No, I'm I can't saying, say like, that. I wouldn't listen to them if they came up with an album. Now, <laughs> but that, but the, he, I think. He, are you saying now? Are you looking back <laughs> and being like they yeah. trash? Oh, yeah. I thought you were like, like back then. Like, like you no, was like, no, this is trash. Back then, you had pink tea, brown tea, black tea, white tea. Like, they the reason why I wore my teeth like for uh, real shoot. like no you look back now like why was I listening to that like for real mm-hmm. like me I was a uh, this dude named Baby Boy the Prince Mm-mm, never even heard of him well, oh what's his man song? Uh, this the way we yeah, live yeah, yeah this yeah. is the way yeah. I live yeah. <laughs> I know what song you're talking about. I use his truck. I know what song you're talking about. I use his truck and took my son out of prom, bumping that junk the whole way. You couldn't tell me nothing that bourbon, boy. I thought I was the man. I I used to listen to a lot of quality music. I used to listen to Gucci. (laughs) But see, Jay-Z. I didn't like Gucci back then. I did. Gucci was I still better really back like Gucci. then. Gucci I'm, I better. agree, bro. I'm yeah. sorry. Chicken I talk. still be surprised by the hype Listen, behind I was trying Gucci. To tell you, Chicken Talk Gucci is nowhere near on this. Like, what was <laughs> it? Richard versus the world? What? Like, Some no, other talking about yeah. That's your podcast. What was his name? Is the one with Lemonade? It was like Richard versus the state or something. Yeah, like yeah, that? yeah. Uh, something like that. Yeah. It's like the state versus Rashad. Yeah, 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 yeah. He has some hype clubs or rock star. Yeah, that's that. Gucci ain't comparing to like Raymond, Go Hard, uh, Go Head, like yeah. See, I, I, I rolling bricks, like all that. Yeah. Gucci, <laughs> See, I used to like, like I said, I wasn't a big rap fan back then, so I was listening to Criss Cross, MC Hammer. <laughs> I got a good report card to get MC Hammer CD. Oh my god! My mom was like, "What you want for these OAs, MC Hammer?" <laughs> <laughs> I used to get that man. My dad used to mess my hair up because MC Hammer used to have a lot of parts. So I'm like, give me MC Hammer, dude. He'd be part my junk up. I'm thinking I'm sweet. I'm getting roasted in this damn school. Oh <laughs> How old are you? I'm 32. I mean, I'm 33. Damn, I'm 33. See, okay, you're not even that much older. Ask for some MC Hammer yeah, yeah. CDs. Hey, pumps in the bumps. He's I'm like, dude, what happened to MC Hammer? He got on a goddamn thong and that boy. Like, man, too legit to quit. Like, no. MC Hammer was the man, dog. MC Hammer was the goddamn man. That's hilarious. Who was you, man? Who was the right rapper you used to like back then? Like. <laughs> Back then, I would say Fifty Cent, hands oh, yeah. down. That was that was one of my. Hold on, man. Hold on. You say you say like looking back, Fifty Cent was what? Oh, I thought oh. you were saying. I thought you was talking about you know who, who the hell? Yeah, oh yeah, no, 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 I'm agreeing with her. It's gonna be like the groups like them franchise boys, yeah. like Who's Crime Mob, group? Crime Mob, uh, Nuck if you buck, like yeah, Trailville, Trailville, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah Little Johnny Eastside boys, 
Yeah. It was a whack, but okay. you know, I was a Yin Yang Twins. I wasn't a fan. I was a fan of Lil Jon and the East Side Boys, but Yin Yang Twins I could not get with. Yin Yang Twins had hits on their album. They have hits, but they could not rap. That's the thing. Their music was so vulgar. These niggas whispered on the song. That's when I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I was done. I'm literally listening to a girl pull up in a parking lot listening to this blaringness. I'm like, hey, how you doing? Buddy? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, can you turn it up? She's like, it's as loud as it could go. Like, Duh. no, this is trash. This y'all whispering the whole song. They had Man. the most vulgar music. I remember it's a song called "Pull My Hair." Man, if y'all never heard this song, go yeah, listen to it because yeah. it is so vulgar. Man. And I used to be in high school listening to this stuff, saying all this stuff. Like I don't even know. I, how I'm only thing I used to be uh, interested with uh, with Yin Yang Twins. I know my man had messed up hands on so the video. I tried to catch oh, the hand. Oh yeah, his hand was kind of. <laughs> he had that little. He's like, I don't know. Yeah, too. yeah. <laughs> And grab my strong hand, like duh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm, I'm dead. Hell no, that's funny. But yeah, music has involved so much, man. Like, what y'all, y'all, New Day or '90s? Which one? As far as like, I'm a mixture. I'm an in between. Okay, I'm an in between because some of the New Age stuff, it is, it's, it's certain stuff has to be developed or yeah. you know. So it's always interesting to see the New Age look on it. Mm -hmm. But as long as you Given that like raw heat or the talent, yeah, or given like actual music, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, it's a lot of cats that don't be giving music. No, you know, that's that's why I say it's like <laughs> a little bit of a mixture for me. It's kind of hard for me because when I first started to love music, I was like a diehard Jay Z fan. Yeah, and that's like such a part of my life. And now I'm like a diehard Drake fan. You know, so crazy it's kind of like. I Who, never, can you actually choose between the two, like in those generations? That's one crazy about me. I like LeBron. I respect Jay Z, but I've never been a fan. Mm. Like very. <laughs> I've, I've I've been like the same way with Jay Z. Yeah. I never like really like grew up or yeah. like was motivated to yeah, listen to, listen, to yeah. Jay Z. So, my dude like, was Nas. No, I never rock with Nas. See, not uh, Jay Z. Or what's your favorite? What do you think Jay Z best album? So, ah, it's funny. It's hard to pick a best album because my favorite album is definitely the Black Album. Okay. Like my favorite is the Blueprint for sure. But I really like cheat. I like to cheat and just pick his greatest hits because yeah. you know you can pick that greatest hit album that he got that the, with the two CDs because he got everything. Yeah, on yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Jay Z, I, I like Jay Z. Don't get me wrong, he top five for sure. I just for some reason I just never was a fan. I never was a fan of Nas. Like his his flow is so see, boring to me. Man, see, <laughs> so you so you don't like uh, J Cole then? I like J Cole. Oh, cause, cause J Cole but, and Nas kind of like that same type of mm, rapper. Would you agree? I don't know because I, 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 that's his idol. That's literally. I mean, what you, like. you know, it's hard for me to say because when I tell you like I wasn't a Nas fan. I literally don't listen to him. Like the songs <laughs> that I can name you from Nas is "I Know I Can," <laughs> which is on my motivational playlist, and uh, "If I Rule the World." Yeah. So yeah. like after that, I don't got nothing for you. Like of course, Ether, but I only heard that song. Okay, twice. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna front. I don't know how you guys felt, but even his uh, latest project with Kanye behind the like production, you didn't like that. I like. I didn't like that Kanye West uh, Nas album. Nah, I like the one he man. had afterwards. It could have been for Kanye West and his production and what I thought how it would be with them together, it could have been a lot better. I I believe like Nas should go ahead and get whoever Rick Ross do it is or and have him produce it. Rick Ross should produce Nas next album. Mm. I don't care who produced Nas next album. Nas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like I said, that's, that's, we go uh we gonna get to y'all stuff, y'all poetry, and y'all rapping and stuff. We gonna start off with the rap. Kyle, when what inspired you and what like how old was you when you was like, you know what, I want to, I want to do this, I want to rap. <clears throat> I just remember I was like, you know, just high school, like in the back of the classroom, just you know writing. Uh, I used to really uh, dabble in poetry a lot as a kid, so mm -hmm. like then it just when I fell in love with music, it just transferred over, okay. you know. Uh, but just used to be in the back of the class writing yeah. songs, you know. Then just like college, I was like. I, I remember I was like I posted a status or something like man if I could just get a microphone it would be yeah. a rap like yeah. and then somebody was like yo I got somebody that knows somebody that has a studio like you yeah. know link up with them you know yeah. and then it just went from there like mm -hmm. and I just fell in love with it like I even if I even if 
Like it's times where it's very difficult and mm. it's very discouraging, but you, I, I could never drop it. Like yeah. I literally could be like, I'm done. Yeah. And literally a week later, I'll be writing <laughs> some shit. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. I gotta go record this. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just hard. Your first time in the studio, how was it? Was it terrible? It was. Cause it it's was, different rapping on yeah. a beat without being in the studio than trying to rap in the studio. You trying to make? Cause my yeah. problem was I was trying to rap on beat so much it, you could tell I was reading. Yeah. So like, dog, this is the trashiest shit I've ever heard. But that's how, it was, that's how it was. That's how it was. It was like it, it, you you had to get adjusted to like knowing how to like how to read or spit into the mic, like yeah, you know. Yeah. So like it's like you said, the beat need to follow you, but you be so busy following the beat. Yeah, sure, I hate yeah. When you yeah. Can hear rappers trying so yeah. hard to because he told me beats, if I um, want to hear any type of real criticism, I know I can go to him. And he was like, "Dog, that shit trash." Like oh, I could, <laughs> yeah. So I'll be one that I'm. I, I, you need those people. I don't need nobody. Oh, it's straight, nigga. No, it's not. I hate yes man <laughs> in the studio. Trust me, I had to cancel out some yes man. Yeah, like, yeah. You gotta yeah, have yeah. real people like with you in the studio, like mm -hmm. telling you if you don't have a real person to go with you in the studio, just go by yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that is either those are gonna be the best two options for you because mm -hmm. if you by yourself, then one. Your producer, either you can listen to your producer, yeah, or you can listen to your own intuition. Mm -hmm. Then if somebody real there, you gonna get both. You could also get your producer side and yeah. the real side. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. But when was when did you like realize like, damn, I'm kind of dope? Like, was it from the jump or a couple of studio sessions or a project? Mm. Um, let's see. I, I, <laughs> it's it's difficult because I've never been asked that question for real, for real. Like, yeah. I guess I would say when I released like. I would release a few freestyles and just pass them out to like the people I went to school with at mm. first, and it was like you know that's I I kind of rock with it you know yeah, like yeah. so I just kept up with it and just every time I released like a project or something it would elevate the yeah, craft yeah, yeah. would elevate the presentation would elevate yeah. the sound would elevate so yeah. it's really just like every time I'm releasing something it's passing a past tier yeah. so it's like I'm bettering myself and just mm. people. People like it's crazy because to this day, people will hit me up from high school or either college, be like, "I just ran across you on Spotify," yeah, or yeah. like, "I just heard this track you did." Yo, you came like yeah. a long ass <laughs> way compared yeah. to like yeah, you know yeah, what you sure. was doing. So, and that's also a thing to me is like it's no quit. Like people, yeah. they'll be doing it for so long and be like, "I didn't get anywhere, so yeah. I'm just done." Yeah, 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 like, yeah for sure. Then. To me, that must have not been your dream or not been yeah. something you wanted to do because I'm willing to keep going for oh, this yeah, shit. Oh, yeah, you got to. Yeah, because when I was um, speaking with Ashley over uh, IG about her coming in, she told me about you. I only got to listen to so much about her, your latest project. What was uh, Extra Ash curriculum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you did that with somebody else? With Dino, yeah. And with then Dino. I listened to the one before that, that Heart to Heart. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the, 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 the thing that I liked about you was you don't sound typical of a Michigan Detroit rapper. Like, mm -hmm. you got your own unique sound or whatever. Thank you. So, I like that. And then, like I said, you actually talking about some stuff and I can relate to some of the things or whatever. Thank and I like you. that one line you was talking about with the whole cheesecake walking because it made me think about the band all over yeah. again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I remember what we was talking about. I remember that. I remember when you was writing that yeah. song. So, like, making a band was like the, 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 the best reality TV show ever was making a band, dog. Chopper was my dog, but Fred was the best one. Cause Fred had the most unique voice. Like, you never heard nobody sound like Fred. So, yeah, I, I say keep going, dog, because you're just straight. Like, you, don't, you ain't no typical Detroit beat. Like, Thank you, man. You're just straight, dog. Like, and I hate when people... Like I cause I got how I named that line. Like people listen to it but not really listen. Like just cause he a local artist, you don't know, you ain't gonna give it one listen. Like dog, play that shit a few times and really, you know what I'm saying, feed off that shit and see what he really talking about. Thank so you. So that's why I hate you mention that because we was talking about the next song and I'm like, you need to push this song and this is the <laughs> yeah. song you just quoted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate when people like you give them some music to listen to and they listen to it one time. Oh, it's dope. Nigga, no, it's not. Cause you ain't listen one time. It take more. Than you gotta one time sit for with it. Like, Cause I'm not gonna lie, yeah. Kanye West, the his first album, um, College Dropout. I didn't like it at first. Really? I but then, as I kept listening, like, dog, this motherfucker's sweet. Like, yeah. I liked it. That's one of my favorite. That's one. And I can hear you. You you seem like a good music type of rapper, dog. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you could be with them and whatever. Who's my man? I forgot my man name. Um, who? Big Sean. Uh, um, two Rocky chains. Rocky Fresh. Rocky Fresh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah early. He used to be signed to uh, MMG. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. So like he I, just dropped something recently. Yeah. So I like to like listen to dudes before they blow up because I remember Kendrick before he blew up when he was rapping off of every Lil Wayne yeah. beat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I like to take it back and stuff like that. So I say keep it going, man. You straight, dog. Thank you, bro. Thank so what you. about you with the poetry? Like, do you ever feel like? First off, when did you start doing poetry? And did you ever think would you write poetry? That you could write like raps. 
She my ghostwriter. I'm gonna tell y'all that first. Time. Cause like I, ain't, I ain't heard some of your poetry stuff. Like I said, I went on your Instagram page, listen to it, and like I said, you, you got some nice stuff or whatever. So like, when did you when did you start doing poetry, and what made you? What was the motivation behind it? Um. Okay. So I started writing poetry in 2008, 2009. Mm. So me and my best friend, the one that I told you just passed away. Okay. So we um we decided to go to Eastern together. We went to high school together. Okay. We decided. Or I'm going to say he decided after I decided <laughs> yeah. that, that we was going to go to college together. We picked our classes together. Mm. And one of the classes that we chose was a poetry class. Okay. He was into poetry, mm. but it was kind of like undercover. So I really didn't know for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, so we <laughs> his, you know, he like, oh, let's take this poetry class. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah. And so we go, we take this class. And for extra credit, they're like, if you go to an open mic, mm on campus you will get you know extra credit so we like okay. show you know we with it yeah so we go to this open mic i spit a poem he spit a poem and then somebody invited us and they was like it's a poetry group mm. on campus yeah that you know y'all should look into actually i got on like it's nope. funny i got on like my whole little drip today <laughs> <laughs> but, um so we go to the poetry um we go to the poetry event like another open mic or whatever mm. he spit and they like oh he cold you know we got to get him on board right away yeah and so me being a i'm a super competitive person like, <laughs> like okay okay I'm, right i'm like <laughs> hold up you know like yeah us moving to this step was my idea yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so basically like we joined this poetry group in 2008 and um, in the group, it was more so like it wasn't just poetry. So mm. we have a really big event that we, it's called the Color Drums TCOD for short. Okay. And we're on like one of the biggest stages on Eastern's campus, mm. and it's like acting and poetry. So it'll be like you have a scene, mm. you got to do like you are like busting and be like why are you here? And then you bust out in the poem like I knew he was cheating on me, <laughs> but it's like you know what I mean? Like yeah. it'd be like literally like a whole like acting scene. So like we we start doing that and while we while we have meetings every week and mm -hmm. at the end of the meeting like for the for the first half of the meeting they'll be like your word is lemon mm -hmm. come up with a, a poem about lemons yeah. don't use these words okay. you know and then at the end challenge. yeah exactly just to like kind of make you think out the box you know mm -hmm. develop your metaphors develop your similes you yeah. know just try to be like you know more creative okay and then at the end of every meeting we have ciphers okay so we literally had to learn how to freestyle. We had yeah. to learn how to write. And so that was kind of like my thing. So I did that all through college, mm. left college. And um, I forgot. So before, and when I was in high school, I was a journalist. Okay. So I wrote for the newspaper. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, my yeah. first job out of high school was at the Detroit Free Press. Oh, like, damn. That's what's I up. was a real writer. <laughs> like, I was yeah. a journalist. So... I just kind of missed writing. Yeah. And so poetry was that way of me filling that gap. Okay, and it also yeah, gave exactly. me like a community of friends. Like most of the people that I met within the poetry society, I'm still very, very close with. Like they some of my best friends. So okay. um, after I got out of college, I kind of let it go because it wasn't, it, it's never really been like my passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love writing. Okay. Like writing is my passion. Yeah. Poetry is just like an extension of my passion, you know, mm. a way for me to stay fresh and stay consistent and stay competitive, mm. you know, things like that. Mm. So basically like, um, my best friend, he was still doing stuff. He decided that he was about to get back on the poetry scene. Yeah. And he performed a few times. As soon as he performed, he got a feature, like, at 90s, which is, like, a real big poetry place in the city. Mm -hmm. He had, like, one of the highest turnouts that they ever had at this place. Okay. And he always used to be telling me, like, best friend, you need to start writing again. You need to start writing again. And I'm like, I'm not going to write. I'm not going to write. <laughs> like, oh, I'm done with that. You know, it's old news. Yeah. And then, like, he performed on a Thursday. And then Tuesday, he died. Damn. Yeah. Like, and so it was weird because when he died, it was like people are looking to me like, where's the poetry? Yeah. Because, yeah, you like, it's kind of like, right, we, like, you know, everyone's looking at me like we know how close y'all was. Yeah, y'all team. Y'all did together, yeah. you know. And so people are looking at me like, to kind of fill in the gap so i was like okay well i guess now it's time for me to start doing poetry again yeah and i really didn't like have a, a plan like okay. i was just like okay well 
I guess this is going to be something that I have to do. And then I yeah. have a really close, one of my other close friends, she works at Detroit is the New Black, which is a black-owned clothing store mm. on Woodward, right next to Chinola Hotel, woman-owned, yeah. black-owned, like, That's super up. dope. And she worked, she used to work for a clothing brand. She was a designer, okay. a fashion designer. She used to work for a, a brand in Cali. Mm -hmm. She moved back, started working at Detroit's New Black, and she hit me up and was like, they want to have a poetry event here. Can yeah. you help me create it? Yeah. And I'm like, cool, <laughs> for sure. Like, yeah. let me hit up my poetry people, you okay. know. And so me and my uh, one of my close friends, like my brother, mm. we decided to like get together, create mm. this event. So now we have a, a poetry event that we do every second Wednesday at Detroit's New Black Car Word. Yeah, I'm saying I'm about to I'm about to come drop by and see check you it out. You should definitely come. It's a vibe, it's a, bro. Yeah, it's such a it's such a good vibe. We have like we're <laughs> one of the newest like consistent black poetry events in Detroit mm -hmm. and it's such an inviting environment because okay. a lot of people come there like I never spit before or yeah. I'm new I'm not a poet but we are like encouraging people like just come out yeah. you know it's a lot of people here that's this is their first yeah, time yeah, yeah. and it's only five dollars to get in it's mm. free wine so okay. people you know loosen up yeah, yeah, you know yeah. we do a lot it's people that come in and rap it's come people that come in and talk about their business it's okay. people that come in and vent so basically oh, like I just got back to doing poetry last year basically like in july like mm -hmm. after my best friend died he died at the end of june you mind me asking how did he how did he pass kind of yeah. you said a couple of times how you can you, you feel comfortable telling me uh it was yeah it was uh he his heart stopped oh, okay so, okay all right yeah he went to cardiac arrest okay it was very it was definitely like a, all of a sudden out of nowhere yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah kind of thing and okay he did a lot he did a, a lot for like he went back to work at our high school as a teacher, mm. you know, like he was doing a lot of stuff at Eastern. He was Greek, yeah. so it was like a lot of just so do outreach. You, do you feel like it's your responsibility, like to you know, hold him down, like like with this whole poetry stuff? Like you saying you doing this and that, and because you say you feel like y'all was they asked you like what's up, like you still gonna do it? Like yeah, I feel like that's really, <laughs> I feel like if he uh, if he never passed away, I would you. Would that's all I say. Are you doing it for you? or Are you doing it for him? I feel like. I feel like he kind of gave me the spark to start mm. again okay. because I'm always a person that runs away from my passion. Yeah. Like when I was in high school, I was a journalist and I, that's all I did. Like I, I was an editor mm. of our yearbook. I was like one of the editors of our newspaper yeah. and I had an opportunity to apply for a scholarship to go to Michigan state, which yeah. was going to pay for my first two years Oh, and school. I was like, I want to be a teacher. I don't yeah. want to be a journalist. So yeah. I was like, I'm not going to apply. Yeah. And then when I went to college, I ended up switching my major to communications, yeah. which was like <laughs> the same thing that yeah. they wanted me to do exactly. at a different school. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so that's kind of like, I kind of feel like it. him passing away is kind of like me, like being like, look, you always running away from your destiny. Just do yeah, it. Do just it, yeah. do it. You know? A lot of so, times we do that, though, to our own self. Like, we just fuck ourselves up. Like, I mean, me and the cuss while we talking about this stuff. But it's like a lot of times we kind of like tell ourselves, like, yeah, we don't need to do this. Like, we kind of like mess our own self up before anybody else can even mess us up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So, it's like, <laughs> so now I just feel like I kind of just owe it to him to see yeah. how far it goes because yeah. he literally like that was one of the last conversations that we had yeah, yeah, was yeah. him like asking me to like do something else you mm. know write some more yeah, come yeah, out yeah. and see me perform you yeah. know and so now I'm just kind of like seeing how far it goes because it is something that is allowing me to be more vocal about mm. like the issues that I'm passionate about mm. or like you know, just about myself or just trying to get, like, some of the pain, yeah. you know, out because I really don't have an outlet. And I, like, I really like to use poetry mm. as, like, an outlet. Like, a lot of my poems are kind of, like, focused towards black people or, yeah. like, calling out stuff that <laughs> yeah. I don't I saw, like. I saw a couple of them, yeah. Right. If you Can I ask you a dumb question? No, go ahead. When people snap their fingers, that's so they won't clap. To mess you up. It's like a, <laughs> it's, it's is like encouragement. You know okay, what I mean? Keep, keep like, going, keep going, it's, girl. It's, yeah. it's kind of like you can, it's kind of like if you hear a bar that you like, yeah. and you like, we, oh, that was hard. You yeah, know, rewind like, that. Book. Exactly. And if they say rewind, that's like the ultimate compliment. Basically. Okay, okay. Come my damn, this, this is a dumb question, but you know, I just wanted to ask. That. No, but you know what? It's funny because at the beginning of the season, I'm I'm the host of like our Word Wednesday, so yeah. like at the beginning of the show, we go over like rules and stuff. Okay. And so that's one of the things. It's like if you feel feeling okay. something, you know, just snap. You mm -hmm. know, 
so you can let people yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Like that's it's so really you, oh, 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 you like this? Okay, man. Well, I mean, yeah. to be honest, you be spitting because when you write something, you you writing something in your head. You like, oh yeah, people gonna yeah. be feeling this. So line, you hoping you know? that, that yeah, yeah. And then so when you get up there and perform it, and people are really feeling that line, you like, I knew this was gonna yeah. be like. You be thinking about the next line. You got like, oh, if you like that, you oh, really yeah, don't like yeah. this. Okay, okay. I now, wish people did that for rap, man. Yeah. So yeah. you know, in the middle of a oh, like this? man, you can know. Like that's the one thing I'll be like, man. Yeah, y'all gotta give me something. People should be in the crowd. <laughs> too good, too, give too cool. Yeah, too cool yeah. to pop. You know, don't want to no. give a head by. You put your own you hands, none of that. You, you just be like, all right. And you know, no. you know what? To uh, answer like, <laughs> no, it's so bad. Look, to answer another part of your question. So like, so with me and Kyle being together, the our first date, like literally our first date. See, I was gonna ask you something about that too. Okay. Good. No, about your poetry. Yeah, I was um, gonna say something a, about the rapping, but go ahead. Oh, with the poetry. We can get to that, but I wanted to ask why we were doing poetry. Um, you said something, I can't quote you, but you were saying, like, basically, um, I don't know, you, of course, you were talking about Kyle, but somebody loving you without you loving yourself first. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. my signature so, poem. It's called Glass. Yeah. So, like, when you, when you, that's the situation between you two, right? Yeah. Okay, so when when that's going on, like, how, like, how do you accept that love when you just don't know the love you got for yourself yet or, or whatever? Like, how do you accept that, like? Cause I'm like I'm listening to you, and you talking about somebody love you, but you don't know really if you love yourself. Right. Like how do you like how how is that like? Explain it's, that poem. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny because like the way you look at yourself is completely different from the way other people look at. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah, for sure. And so like I remember I saw I saw a, a meme one day, and it was like put your insecurities in the hands of a real man, mm -hmm. and he'll show you that they you know they worth more than you think. For sure. So yeah, that's yeah. kind of basically yeah. like the like the gist of my poem because mm -hmm. it's like things that I felt were like put me what's the word I want to say like things that made me feel unworthy mm -hmm. when you actually bring them to the table mm -hmm. it's not really a big deal like for me like I had a baby before we started dating okay. and with me having a baby being a single mom I had the thought that like nobody would want me yeah. you know because I felt like that was baggage you know you a baby mama people yeah. were afraid of like the drama and it's a lot of stigma mm -hmm. that comes with that you know and all the stuff like I told y'all about today like me growing up poor yeah, yeah, you know yeah. like I got a lot of siblings yeah, you know it's yeah. a lot so you, you just, just kind of like like with the music like we saying like you kind already thinking for somebody else before you even get to know that person or right whatever. exactly so I kind of felt like my baggage was just too much yeah. you know and then when we started dating and you know you start to unpack your baggage and he's mm. all like oh that's not really a big deal <laughs> like oh that's okay we can get past that like oh you know and you start realizing like you know like cause one of the lines I put like I was saying, like, in the gist of the poem is, like, me saying that I'm broken mm -hmm. and him telling me that broken glass is what you need for cathedrals. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. just because you're broken doesn't mean that you're not still whole. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like, you can still be <laughs> 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 Great use, Tia. That's Tia right there on the YouTube. Go ahead, dog. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it is, you know. Like when you actually, yeah, you know, are open and honest about, you know, the things that you've gone through, and you actually meet somebody who cares to, you know, like to, you know, not judge you and mm -hmm. not, you know, hold it against you yeah, and like yeah. work work with you to, you know, build a better life. And mm -hmm. you know, you take what they have going on where they feel, you know, they might feel. A little bit, you know, uh, confused, or you know, they might feel unworthy. Yeah. You know, like you don't feel up to par, and you know, you actually work towards those goals and mm -hmm. stuff together. Then it makes such a yeah. better, a much a better relationship. You oh know? yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I was looking at your stuff, y'all. We got some similarities, whatever. As far as like, I have a son that's thirteen, and with me and my fiance, we got engaged in uh in last year in April, and I know you you proposed on July 9th. We get yep. married July tenth. Oh wow! That's, yeah, right. that's, yeah. Our, that's our anniversary. That's our, we're, yeah, no, See, the ninth is our oh, anniversary. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and we getting married on the ninth next year. Oh yeah, so yeah, we that's get married this year, July tenth. Cause that's my mom's birthday. So oh, with her wow. passing, I felt like that's my that's a gift. So I ain't always got to think about bad things when her birthday come around. Right. That's or a good whatever. Idea. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> with that, like, with having that, you say that baggage and stuff like that's how I knew like my fiance was the one. Like you accepted me with my old ass son you know what I'm saying like you know and you always gotta be worried about you know saying oh man is the, is the with her is the baby mama crazy right. is we gonna work through this cause I my son stay with me 
So he go with his mom for the summertime just because I felt like he's a boy. He should be with me learning how to be a man. You feel me? Right. So, uh, yeah, so we it worked out and stuff like that. So I was going to ask you, like, would you, um, you know, meeting her and everything. Like, when did y'all meet? Exactly. Like, what year? We uh, met. We met. Man, what year? 2015. 15. Yeah. Okay. Dang, that, I was going to say That's the same time me and my fiance got together in 2015. So yeah, yeah. So um, what did you think? Like, damn, Hopper, goddamn kid, dad, they crazy. Like, <laughs> no, but that's like, the crazy. Do you think thing. about that? Like, no, no, no. The, the crazy thing is, I really <laughs> wasn't even worried about the situation. Then every time I mentioned she had a kid, everybody was like, well, "Be careful, dog." Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, I wasn't worried about it, so thanks. But yeah. now you got me worried now because yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna be cool with yeah, everybody. Exactly. But no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, no, I was never really worried about anything. Like. Like, uh, so I actually helped. We worked at Enterprise at the time. Okay. And I, I was helping her work at a branch, mm. uh, at the branch she was managing. Mm. And just really, we we hit it off, like, immediately from yeah. the day that I was helping her work. Okay. Um, we just had a convo going. We literally, it wasn't, like, the awkward convo. Like, yeah. it dies down. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. you're like yeah. school. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, it just kept, everything just kept naturally going. Yeah. And so, like. Like, I told her way later on, like, she was like, I was so worried, like, you wasn't going to accept me because yeah. I already had Kennedy. And I'm yeah. like, girl, I saw that baby seat you took to your car forever ago. Like, <laughs> I, I been it. saw yeah. that, right? It had to be your kid, like, <laughs> right? For real. Nobody just taking a baby seat yeah. to the car, you yeah. know? So, yeah. <laughs> That was like my, my <laughs> biggest thing because it's like people knew me yeah. and they knew I had a kid, but like at the time she was like one going on two when yeah, we first yeah, yeah. started dating. Yeah. And so I'm like, how do you tell? Like, yeah. I think he was like the first person that I was going to be dating that hadn't seen me with my baby. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was thinking like, when's a good time to tell him? You know, like. Yeah, he like, I already know. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> like, he was like, I just didn't know if you had a daughter or a son. Yeah. I was just like, I was all like, I don't know when to say it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now with you having a daughter, like you got to make sure like, all right, this dude got to be legit, like cool. Because yeah, that, that's a scary, scary thing. It's Hell, scary. Yeah. yeah, it's very scary. Like, yeah. And it's been some situations like in my family in the past where like people have trusted people mm. and it hasn't ended well so mm. that just really like makes me yeah, yeah, yeah. even more like skeptical you know yeah, just yeah, yeah. dating yeah so that's kind of why that was like my biggest hurdle just going back into the dating game mm. having a kid because you just it, women with kids just have su they get such a bad rap you know? oh yeah for sure yeah so how 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 is it with you and the, um your daughter father like are y'all cool yeah co-parent like is everything yeah. good we co-parent we actually um we co-parent pretty well. Mm -hmm. We had, like, rough patches in the past. Yeah, like, like, like everybody. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, I, I, I definitely feel like if I had to choose somebody to have a baby with and not, not um, be with them, I feel mm -hmm. like my, my situation is, like, ideal. Yeah. He has a girlfriend now. Like, they have a kid together. And she yeah. had kids before. And they all, like, live together. So, okay. they all in their little bubble over there. Yeah. Like, he's met... You know, like they've met so many yeah, yeah, yeah. times. So it's, like, it's cool, and everything together, good. Mm -hmm. together, yeah. you know? But see, that's what's up, because that's how I be. Because, like I said, my, um, I had a high school girlfriend. We was together for five years. We had a son early in the game. And once we broke up, of course, it was like that, man, kiss my ass. Like that, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, exactly. It'd be like and, that in the It was like until a conversation with my mom was like, listen, you know, y'all gotta, like, it's not until 18, it's like forever. Like, until right. one of y'all leave, y'all gotta raise this kid together forever. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, like, y'all gotta make this right. Like you don't want your son growing up seeing like y'all beefed out all the time. Mm -hmm. So that triggered me. So like, all right, bet. So we worked out. We was cool. She let me. My mother Texas let me. You know, saying take him with me and stuff like that. Never no child support issues. No threatening conversations about taking me to court. So we always been good. And then she wound up getting into a relationship. She got married. Had two girls. I got to my relationship. I am with. I'm with now. And we had a son. And it was crazy because I'm over her stepdad house and we over there drinking 1800 with her stepdad and we just having a good time like right? that, and that's how it is yeah. like we all went when my uh my baby she had like a graduation when mm -hmm. she went from kindergarten to first grade and we literally went out to dinner mm -hmm. with him because he has a huge family yeah, yeah and yeah. i love his family like his mom texts me all the time like okay. we talk all the time yeah. And you and need like, that though, like you need that. Yeah, exactly. And like his dad, like his his parents are separated, and they're both like remarried. Okay. So he kind of understands already, like the situation that we're mm -hmm. in, because we got together and we've been together for like four years. Yeah. And, you know, he just got his girlfriend like 
um, I don't know how long ago, so like mm -hmm. a few years ago, whatever, yeah. you know, but it's been like a really good situation where mm -hmm. like we went through a rough patch where stuff was like super messy. Oh, yeah, it's, all, you know, it's always it's that all, beginning. Right, so like, yeah, exactly, like, hold on, cuz I know you for real. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's just like, don't test me. Yeah, like, like, I could get crazy. You yeah. know, it be, it be stuff like that, you know, sometimes you just gotta establish yeah. boundaries, but I feel like. What I what I realize is the only reason that situations don't work when people break up is because somebody else still wants that other person. Man, my mom said that same thing. And, and that's thing, really like the only real. thing. And I think we already came to terms yeah. like I don't want you anymore. Yeah. You don't want me anymore. Yeah. So at this point, Kennedy yeah, is we have our a daughter. Priority. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, because that's how, like I said, my my situation was like, listen, I, I remember her first boyfriend. That was oh man, that was bad. That was bad. Cause I was trying to be a big man, like cause listen. Listen, I don't want her. She don't right. want me. Exactly. We got a son together, so we going to co-parent. Like, I'm going to be around. She's going to be around. He's like, all right, I respect that. The moment I call her about my son, I'm like, listen, we got to, you know, school. His first day of school. He tripping, like, tough. Like, to the fact that there might be some hands getting thrown. Like, but listen, man, I just told you everything is good. Like, I don't want her no more. I'm happy that she got you. Right. That just <laughs> means it's a place of his insecurity. Yeah. If you right. ask me, and that's like. When he asked me, like. Oh, oh, you you still gonna mess with that with that light skin n word? Like, I'm like, come on, bro. Like, See, that's the we take thing. like you know, it's the first day of school, so of course we both gonna be at the first day of school. Right. And I'm like, I'm not trying to throw your business out the out there, but like, it was a big issue because he like we was gone too long. He thinking that we ain't went somewhere. I'm like, oh, dog, listen, God. like just chill, man. Right. That's funny <laughs> because I be like, I'll tell my friends because some of my friends ask me about like how I feel yeah. now that like my ex is in a in a like new relationship mm. and in my mind all I can think about is the bad yeah. that caused us to break up yeah. so I'd be like in the back of my head like look if you want him to do you like da 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 yeah. that's fine with me yeah. like cause I know what he capable of you yeah, know yeah, like yeah. you know you understand cause we was together for like four almost five years yeah. like through college Okay. so like I done been through a lot yeah. and after everything that I've been through I don't want to deal with that yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean for sure, like yeah. that's not something that I'm interested in yeah. at all so yeah. Do you? You know, yeah, you thought he might have changed. Yeah. That's, that's but no, you do, though, because like, I was happy when she got the next dude. Like, oh, man, you working computers? Like, oh, man, what right, up, listen, though? I, like, you good. I feel like now that you got a girlfriend, yeah. he's much more responsible. But no, sometimes, like, I ain't going to lie. Like, when me and my son mom was together, I did dirt. I'm quite sure she did dirt and stuff like that. But I felt like that helped me for the next relationship, whatever. Because right now, I don't even... The thing, the the reason why I knew she was the one is because I didn't think about nobody else but her. So I'm like, damn, like I never even thought about marriage until I got with her. Like, oh, huh, I'm tripping. Like, I'm changing up. Like, <laughs> I never thought about getting married to nobody. Like, we going to weddings. I'm like, dog, I gotta make this happen one day. Like, this, like she the truth. Like, she and I felt like she was like a a, a, a asset to me. Like, I felt like things was going right when I got with her. Like, mm -hmm. things that never happened to me before was happening. Like. Like, even a bad situation still be good because we together. Yeah, that's Like, that's the when thing. you know somebody is the truth. Like, yes, oh, we, we pole as hell right now, but shit, we happy, though. We good. Yeah, and that's the thing. <laughs> like, a lot of people think that, like, yeah. a lot of people think that when you get into a relationship that people <laughs> make you change. Yeah. But what I realized is when you're in a relationship with somebody that appreciates you and makes it easier, they inspire you to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like it's certain things about myself that I really didn't care about mm -hmm. when I was, you know, in other relationships. Or it's yeah. like, this is me, you got to deal. With yeah, you know, like yeah, I was kind of like, exactly, that's yeah. just how I'm gonna be. But now I'm like, I want to be better. You know, yeah. like I want to make sure that I'm presenting myself as best as I can. You know, like if this is what you want in a wife, like even though I'm not there yet, I'm willing to try and get yeah. there. And y'all got built together, like for real. Like it, nothing's gonna be easy. Nothing's gonna be no movie book book fairy tale thing. Right. It's gonna be a build up. It's gonna be a hustle. It's gonna be some struggle, some tears, some yeah, fights, definitely. all that stuff. But as long as y'all in it together, like that's. That's when you know that person is the one. So, but that's the thing people just don't like be like, yeah. fully committed. That's so it, easy like, to say, nigga, fuck you. Right? Yeah, yeah, so it's like, easy that, to yeah, work with. It is. Like, Working away is the easiest thing. You yeah. kind of actually put it point on. Like I really kind of be trying to figure out like yeah. what is it, but. That's Man. what it is. It's Hell just yeah. easy for you to say "fuck you." Like, yeah, just, I'm out. It's six million I'm just, <laughs> right? I'm exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. That's the easiest so, uh, thing to what say. what made Ashley like the one? Like, you know what? Like, I'm gonna ask you go first. Like, what made her the one? And you, when was it? Like, all right, motherfucker, it, it's been how many years? Like, when you gonna do it? Yeah. I read a post. You was like, I was hoping last year was the last year for y'all be boyfriend girlfriend. Oh, last yeah, bad time. <laughs> yep, Told you I was it. snooping. I wanted to get some questions. <laughs> 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 so when when did you feel like? Cause as men, you you get the feeling, but you like, dog. When I'm gonna do it? 
So when did you know like she the one and I'ma put this into plan? So I guess it would be two two phases. For one, I felt like in the initial dating phase she was the one because yeah. like like one of our first dates we literally just looking at each other and yeah. I literally am speechless. Yeah. I'm somebody where I feel the need or and I don't feel the need, just I talk a lot. Yeah. So and this was like literally a moment where I didn't feel the need to talk. I'm yeah. just staring at the net. I'm just staring at her, you know, yeah. staring at her eyes, you know, and like it just feels like I'm literally talking to her while yeah. we just staring at each yeah. other. So that was like my first initial, you know, where I was like, man, I think she's the one. Yeah. And then secondly, just I would say, you know, we had a few hiccups and we worked through those hiccups. Yeah. Like not often do you ever, I would say, work together through hiccups it's yeah. always it's like I, one person exactly yeah. it's one-sided a lot of the times yeah, yeah, and yeah. no matter like our like how many trials and tribulations we've been through we always are like we always come at the end of the day we're gonna come together and be like listen yeah. these are the problems these are the issues yeah we need to solve these issues we need to work on these problems yeah. here's what i could bring to the table here's what i could bring to the table yeah, yeah. or here's what we could do together to okay. make or build this to stronger you yeah. know so and that's when I was just like, you know, and aside from a few hints, you know, she's like, I'm tired, you know, <laughs> you know, but yeah, you know, but aside from that, you know, yeah, like I, I just felt like she was the one, like yeah. I, I was ready. You was know? like, was it, did you have some plan? I tried to plan something, but it just didn't work. My, my proposal was kind of whack. He had a huge, big, all planned out proposal. I had one, but. It didn't work. How I thought it, it was gonna work. It was a whole. It was a whole day. Yeah, that's what's up. See, I had. I man, I had the, the song I wanted to be played. Everything mm -hmm. didn't work. I wanted. To, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm about to make it. Make it up on like when we do our little vows and stuff. I'm gonna make everybody in that boy cry because <laughs> I felt like my proposal was. It was kind of wet, but we too wet people. She know. <laughs> well, if you don't mind, if you don't mind me asking, what was your proposal? Oh, it, all right. <laughs> so it supposed to been. On Mother's Day, because her her grandmother from Milwaukee was gonna be coming in town. Okay. Her grandmother Detroit and her mom. I was gonna take them all to dinner, mm -hmm. and we was gonna just have this big thing, and then I was gonna come out the blue and propose. Of course, her grandma like I'm not coming down. I'm like, damn, I'm not, I gotta think of something else now. Yeah. I got this ring in my pocket. It's on fire. Like, so I'm trying to think of something else to do. Everything I was thinking of, it just didn't work. So then her stepdad was like, listen, dog, y'all both corny. Like y'all both do y'all thing. Y'all not. Me and her, we are not, not about corny. yeah. No, like, I'm not. We are not about the about the people. We are about us. So he's like, dog, do it how you how you do it. So I I'm about to go and coach a game, and um, you know I'm a, I'm a basketball coach. I'm about to go coach my son's team and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I'm like I'm talking to her. I'm like telling her like yeah, you know I appreciate this because you, you've been riding with me through the brokers of the broke days <laughs> and goddamn everything. Like I appreciate you. I'm like, what if I just had a ring and just be like. You know what I'm saying? Let's get married. She be like, nah, you ain't gonna do that. You ain't ready, whatever. So I got the ring in my drawers. Well, my drawers be in the closet, like. So I get it, like. You know what? You know what I'm saying? I think it's time, like, we've been playing, like. You know what I'm saying? We both know we gonna be with each other. You the one, so you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You should marry me. Like, uh, whatever, dog. So then I put a ring out. She was like, I ain't gonna lie. She set you up for that. Because if it was a situation yeah. like me yeah. and her, I'm letting you know. I'm gonna be, oh, yeah. you don't think I got a ring? Yeah. Oh, That's oh, right. well, oh. let's do it now. So then yeah, when I put like, a ring out, she's like, is you for real? Like, <laughs> yeah. Right, so then I get a ring and stuff, and I went to go coach my game. I, it could have been better, but it's just like things kept messing it up. It's, it's really, I don't think it's really, <laughs> it's really not like, it's about the people. Like, really, you know what I mean? It really yeah. don't matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, a, it's the, really the thought that counts. And her nails you know? are done, so when she posted a picture, it was going to be like... Bro, that was the main thing I learned. <laughs> Literally, that was the only main thing I learned. I was like, Dog, make, sure, no make sure the nails got, done and the hair done. The corner, yeah. He Man. said, he said everything. Up. I seen a little bit of y'all stuff, because y'all was at like the Fisher Building. Yeah, that's whatever. so basically, yeah. like the Fisher Building is my favorite building in Detroit. Okay. I grew up, like I said, around the corner from Yeah, there. yeah, that's your hood. Right. When I was a kid, my mom used to always tell us, like, if you ever get lost, just tell somebody, <laughs> tell them to bring you to the Fisher Building. Yeah. If they bring you there, you know how to get home from there. So, like, it's been my favorite building the okay. entire time. So, when we was getting engaged, like, it was our anniversary. So it was like our four year anniversary. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, you know, like we had, we was just going to go off our anniversary. Okay. And, um, woke up, he cooked me breakfast. Yeah. And it was like, breakfast he never in cooked. Bed. 
Like, it was raisin <laughs> bed <laughs> and, like, some flowers. And I was like, oh, that's what's up. He's like, yeah, I just want to make you breakfast real quick. Yeah. I got to go to work. Okay. He was like, but I'll see you later. And I'm like, okay, cool. So then I get up, you know, I'm, like, relaxing. I thought I just had time to chill. I was, yeah. like, set up an appointment. I was about to get my hair braided, all this stuff. You know? <laughs> I'm, like, literally just moseying around. And my sister called me and was like, I need you to get ready. I'm about to pick you up in 10 minutes. And yeah. I was like, what? I'm like, what you mean? So she's like, yeah, get ready. So I'm like, oh, okay. So she come pick me up. And she dropped me off somewhere downtown. And, like, we walk in. And they were like, yeah, we have an appointment for Ashley. And I was like, what? <laughs> and it was a massage. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, you know, yeah. get a massage for my anniversary. That's cool. Yeah. So then we go get a massage. Then my sister come back and pick me up. And then I'm walking to my house, like mm. walking up to the house, and my hairstylist is walking up with me. And yeah. I and like she like meet me there and yeah. I'm like, Why are you here? Yeah. And she was like, Oh, I just came to do your hair and makeup. I was like, What? She's like, Oh yeah, you about to go out to dinner. I'm like, <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, Damn, all right. He killed me, don't I? Hey, make it out, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> so like okay, okay, so she come in, fleek me up, you know, yeah. you know, do like full face makeup, everything. Yeah. And I haven't seen him because he's at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this whole time I'm thinking like he at work. So then he comes in the house mm. and walks past me and goes like straight to the bathroom. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So he comes out and he got on like a t shirt and some jeans. Yeah. And I was like, okay, whatever. We about to go out to dinner. So I'm thinking like. Okay, we're not going nowhere that fancy because yeah. what he got on. Yeah. So then they take me downstairs. So I, because I got like a whole studio downstairs. So we taking pictures. I come back upstairs. He in a full suit. Yeah. And so I'm like, what? So I go outside. He bring he bring this whole bouquet of blue roses, my favorite color, and like surprise me with these roses. Like we about to go to dinner. Yeah. So then we go to dinner, right? He took me to the Whitney. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you fancy. You know, I'm like, you fancy. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, so we had dinner. And then the waitress come up to us and was like, here's your menus. It was custom menus. I said, happy Damn. anniversary on them. And it was like. The waitress was super dope. No, yeah. like that. It was, it happened to be where that waitress was like. The only waitress that did it, like yeah. it was something unique. She yeah. did. Yeah, like, she was oh, like, and she was like, she was like, she was like, she was like. So what I like to do for anniversaries is, you write him a letter, he writes yeah. you a letter, and I'm gonna seal them together yeah. so y'all can't open them unless y'all together. Yeah. And you can open them on like another anniversary to yeah. remember this day or whatever. And I was like, mm -hmm. did you know he was a rapper and I'm a poet? <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is perfect. Yeah. You know? So we like write ourselves love notes. And I see his phone like blowing up. Yeah. And I was like, why is his phone blowing up? And I saw my, like, my I got like my god best friend passed away. And then I got a girl best friend. And I saw her name on his phone. And so I'm thinking like he probably got them like at yeah. her house or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, or some big know? party like, or something. Yeah. yeah. So I, so he was like, I know you want to walk around, go walk around. So I walk around. You know, I'm looking in the building. So I'm thinking like when I come back, he gonna have like a ring or something at yeah. the table. Yeah. So we go through, we went through our dinner, you know, everything, and then we're leaving. And so I'm like, okay, nothing happening. But yeah. I was like, kind of like my anticipation is yeah. up now. She's like, oh, girl, get together, girl. Right, like, I feel like <laughs> it's something going down. But, you know, in the back of my mind, also, he a wild card. So I'm trying yeah. to, like, not get my hopes up because at the same time, I'm still thinking, like, it is our anniversary. Yeah. And we had, like, a real bad, like, almost breakup at the beginning of the year. Yeah. So I feel like he was, I'm like, maybe he's just making amends. I don't really know. Yeah. So we so we lead the Whitney. We driving around and we like in the new center area because it's mm -hmm. like really close. You know the Whitney's yeah, kind of yeah. close to Wayne State. Mm -hmm. Anytime I pass the Fisher Building, I always say the same thing. I'm like, oh, they're gonna my favorite building. Yeah. Like I love it. They're gonna Fisher Building. Da, 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 da. And so he he was like, you know what? You always say that this is your favorite building. Mm -hmm. But you never took me there. He mm. like you never actually showed Stick me. Stick James, cause. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and he was like, he was like, I was like, well, we can go whenever you want. And he was like, ah, oh, let me look at the time. He was like, he was like, uh, oh, I think we got a little time. He was like, yeah. let's let's stop there. And so he tried to park a place, and I was like, we can just park right here. He was like, I want to go in right here, and yeah. I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, yeah. like whatever. And so we walk in. And it was like a booth that was like, sign in here. And I was like, do we got to sign in? And the lady was like, looking at me, she was like, 
Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I yeah. was like, kind of weird, but I'm like, whatever. And I did this spin, like, this is the Fisher Building. And if you've never been in there, it's like gold laced yeah. everywhere. Like, yeah, it's yeah, such yeah. a beautiful building. It's like mosaic tiles some places. It's like flags some places. Mm. It's a lot of gold. It's really beautiful. So I turned around. I did this little spin. And then I'm like looking at him. And he like fumbling through his jacket. Yeah. And then he turns me around, yeah. and on the second floor balcony, yeah, little, yep. half of my friends is up there with balloons that say "Marry Me," yeah. and I was like, "Oh my god!" God like, damn, man! I'm, I, I have who <laughs> shorts, shorts on my white right beard. <laughs> Hey, I hope my girl listens to this boy. I'm sorry, I'll make it up. <laughs> yeah, I should have called this fool early. I wish I wouldn't knew y'all did. <laughs> I was like, I was just like, oh my God. It was cra- you know, it was That's like so crazy. Dope. Cause yeah. I'm like, you really thought yeah. about all of this. Cause when I, I he asked me what I wanted to do for our anniversary and I was like, I just want to watch Marvel movies all day yeah, and yeah. stay in. Cause like my best friend died like literally two weeks before we got oh, engaged. Wow. Yeah. So I was still like in my mourning period, Man. you know. So That's I, all I'm like. I just want to stay in. Like, can we just not, yeah. you know, do nothing? And he playing his whole you're day. Like, oh, hell no. I got right. this. <laughs> he his whole day. I did all this. And all all, all of good. my friends was in on it. And I was the only one that didn't know. And they, like, came down and was, like, giving me the balloons. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Man. See, I'm so... Oh, I, I, I try. I thought about it every time I go to work. Like, yo, what can I do that special? Like, and I had, like I said, I had everything planned, man. I had a tearjerker and everything for it, jump, but... Just didn't work. Then when it didn't work, I'm like, man, I'm tired of holding this mud. So <laughs> I, it yeah, I'll make it up some type of way though, for real. But that, no, that was that was sweet though, though. Like, what was the whole process through that? Like, you knew you knew it was our favorite building, like, so you yeah, did, you call our homegirls and it's like, our yeah. Sister. So like, I had the ring and yeah. it was like it was like two two scenarios. I was ready to propose, but I was like, man, I just really want to make it super special. So yeah, I was like it. So she had a launch party for her business, and yeah. that was around the it same was fourth, time. It was five days okay. before. It was Fourth of July. Yeah. And I originally was gonna propose then. I thought it was. Her mom be- came <laughs> into town. Was waiting, all man. of this, yeah. like I'm like, it. It was just something where I was like, I, I like to do stuff big. Like, yeah, like yeah, if yeah, I'm yeah. gonna do it, I'm gonna do it like how I want to do yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Although I, I did want to do day it that sure. day. I was expecting. And I'm pretty sure her mom expected me to do it that day because she flew in that day yeah, as yeah, well yeah. or like for that time frame, that, that weekend. Yeah, she was But there. I was like, man, <laughs> it feel rushed. Like, I don't have a plan. Yeah. Like, I like when I when I proposed on our anniversary, I had a plan. Yeah. I had a schedule. I had an idea what was going to happen. Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. And I didn't just want to be fumbling, like, straight up be like, you know, I love you. <laughs> like, you know. Like, like me, huh? Like, yeah. <laughs> No, no, bro. Oh, no, God. bro. That was different. That's, that's great, like, bro. oh, I'm going to set you up. I got oh, yeah. you a ring. It's all right. I'm that's... playing. I'm talking to you, man. Nah. <laughs> like, like, no, I ain't going to fuck up like you, bro. Nah. No, bro. No. No, not at all. No, go ahead. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so, you know, I was just like, all right. I'm going to figure this out. I was like, I want it. I was like, I told myself, I was like, either I'm going to do it this day. Yeah. And I was like, nah, whatever the next biggest day is, I'm just doing it that day. Okay. And it was our anniversary. I was yeah. like, I'm going to figure it out. I was yeah. like, so, you know, I got pretty much all our close friends, family together that yeah. I needed. You yeah. know, we discussed like a plan, went over like, you know, exchange like logistics, ideas, yeah, how we going to yeah, do yeah. everything and That's just put up. it everything together. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right, so yeah, with his proposal, like, was it ever like a um, a certain amount of time you gave him? Like, all right, dog, like, it's, we've been together for so long. Because my <laughs> my girl, she was hinting, like, we going to all these events, everybody married and, and all this shit. We girlfriend, boyfriend. That sounds so stupid. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's funny because I was watching a, a comedy show and it was a lady and she was like, she was like, if you want a husband, you have to grind him down. Like, you know, like she was talking like about Aaron like, Thomas, E.T. Like, and Joe. Like, in, like, to be honest, I feel like no guy is just like, like he said when we first started dating, he was like, okay, she's the one. Yeah. But most guys don't be having a timeline and, and will be like, oh, yeah, mm. I know in five years, you know, because when we first started dating, I kind of had a time frame where I'm like, in this many years, I mm. feel like we should be married. You know, yeah. like we should be working towards getting married. Yeah. 
And I think that year I kind of just started putting more pressure. <laughs> you know, actually it was a year before because we almost broke up. Yeah. Like we had gotten to like. Yeah, be big. You know, man. yeah. <laughs> no, it was big. Like we got into a real big disagreement where we was both like kind of ready to walk away. Yeah. And I think after that situation, he kind of understood that I was like. <laughs> I'm laughing. On the like... brink of like. You either going to lose me or you going to have me forever, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you get to those type of <laughs> those type of situations, you know, it kind of motivates guys to be like, I don't want to lose this girl yeah, forever. You know, I yeah. need to let her know that I'm serious. And the, the thing that I can show to make sure she knows I'm serious is this next step. Mm -hmm. So I think it was more so like me just putting my foot down and being vocal. Like, I think women just need to be vocal about what they want because at the beginning of our relationship, he already knew that that was the ultimate goal. You yeah. know, when you leave it open to interpretation and you don't let them know, yeah. like, on my vision board, I had, the ring that I got was on my vision board. Okay. Like, you know, and I had, like, goals and I'm like, this is stuff that I want to accomplish and, and we have a lot of conversations about what we want going mm. forward. Like, we check in with each other a lot. So, mm. like, if it's something we're working towards, he knows. Like, you yeah. know that this is what yeah. I'm looking for. You yeah. know, like, you people don't just get in a relationship year one and be like, yeah, I want to get married and then don't check back in yeah. until year But five. relationships, like, you got to have those conversations with each other because you never know where each other is at. Exactly. And then if it's something that's bothering you, like I told my girl, don't ever wait until you got 30 different things that then pissed you off to just let it all loose. Exactly. Like, exactly. let me know from day one. Hey, I ain't feeling that. I don't like this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let me know from day one. Don't let that shit build up because she had cancer. And cancer was... That's true. Cause my mom was cancer. Emotional. My I brother know. emotional as hell. Man, he was emotional, bro. Yeah. He was just emotional when he called here before the show happened. Cancer <laughs> I used to have a, a lot of cancer friends, but I'm a Capricorn, and people say Capricorn's heartless. Yeah. So I kind of had to phase out my. And see, my relationship, they say we don't fit at all. I'm a Gemini. Well, I'm the last day for Gemini. She had cancer. So they say, really, we not even supposed to be together. You know, I don't, yeah, but I, I don't feed into all that, but the cancer. I really love signs, but I don't feed into like who you should be with, kind of, because I just yeah. feel like you can make any relationship work if you work towards it. It's yeah, just but, a dedication. Yeah, but yeah, communication is, is definitely like key to a relationship for real. I'm 100%. learning that stuff for real. Like, and that's how I knew my girl was the one, because like one year, what? Uh, it's 2020 2018 was like my worst year I was working at Chrysler Lost that job I didn't lose it But they like Just took my days away Because I was a new kid On the block So mm -hmm. of course I ain't got to see early Like other people right. And I got to a bad crisis So I'm carless I'm, I'm, I'm coaching Like but everything Was just like It was just It was a struggle I'm looking for a job I'm working part time here Getting a little money But I damn She ride with me Through these The struggle So I'm mm -hmm. like Dang you must be for real Because anybody else Would be like I'm out Because we going places And she not making me Look bad So she cash out me money So I can put my debit card out So we ain't pulling out Her Mickey Mouse boy Knowing this from a girl Like <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like You know what Yeah you the motherfucking one So it had to make that work out Like you know when it's the When she the one Like for real You know You get the sign because I've been in three major relationships and like I said I never thought about marriage until this one yeah you it's know? funny because like for me I've been I've always been like an independent person like mm -hmm. you know I grew up in a struggle like I said so I've always had to figure things out on my own mm -hmm. And I really don't trust people. Like, I don't yeah. trust people when they be like, I got you yeah, or it's yeah, going to yeah. be okay. And the day when I knew, like, I really could trust him and I was like, okay, this is a person, like, I really know that I'm going to marry. We were, we, since the beginning of our relationship, we've been traveling. Yeah. Like, tra like international traveling, long trips, all this stuff. That's what's so up. we are on our way to Africa. We're in London. That was big. <laughs> yes, we, we, are, we have just finished our one day excursion in London, mm -hmm. and we're on our way to catch our next flight. And this flight is thirteen hours, mm -hmm. so we gotta make this flight. We're late. We're running behind, and it's about like thirty minutes till the flight leaves, mm -hmm. and I'm panicking. Okay. Like the airport brings out the most <laughs> anxiety. Yeah. ever for me like I don't know what it is but just the fact that you know you done paid so much for a flight and oh, the, yeah. like I don't like being late I yeah. don't like that like I'd rather be there in enough time so I feel comfortable but we're with a group of people they led us to the wrong <laughs> the wrong like uh, gate or whatever mm. and the the airport in in London you have to take a train to your gate uh, like okay. it's that big yeah. so this guy got us at the we already behind and now he got us at the wrong gate. Mm -hmm. So now we got to go to a whole... We got to get back on the train, 
go back through another, you know, flight, all this stuff. We late. We late, late, <laughs> like, late. And so we finally, like, get our tickets and we go through and we're like, cool, we just go to the thing. They like, no, guess what? You still got to go through TSA. Damn. And I was like, when I realized that we had to go to th- through TSA too, yeah. after we got our tickets, like, through, mm-hmm. I was ready to cry. <laughs> like, I was and when girls stressed panic, out. Like, exactly. You gotta, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's turned, a different panic, boy. Like, exactly. <laughs> we in a whole different country about to miss our flight and it's only one flight you know yeah. I was like about to cry and I was like panicking and he like took me and like looked at me and was like it's gonna be okay yeah. like it's okay like I'm here we're gonna be fine and something about that moment like I really trusted him I was mm. like I don't know how you said this or like what you did <laughs> and I was like I just was like okay like I'm going like you know what it's, everything's out of my hands yeah, anyway sure. so yeah. I might as well yeah. put my trust into this person that's yeah, telling yeah, me yeah. you know everything's gonna be okay and it was just like kind of the way like yeah. he just put it to me I was like I don't trust nobody but I trust you yeah, I was like, like this I was like okay yeah I'm a I'm I was like this that was that was the day when I was like for sure yeah like okay that's what's up man Put a lot of pressure on you dudes. Y'all better get y'all stuff together. <laughs> <laughs> he read minds. He said he had no conversation. <laughs> he had a conversation through soul. Like, baby, I love you. <laughs> I know you love me because I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. We're about no, to miss but no, but like, But, no, that, that's so what's good. up, though. Because, like, man, like I said, with relationships, people be thinking, like, man, it's cool to be a... I mean, it's cool to be a hoe and, and mess with all these chicks. Like, man, it's cool for... Sometimes, but, dog, uh, you need somebody to hold you down. Like, it's, it, things are going to... Things gonna happen better for you when you you do stuff the right way, man. Like it's cool to be able to say you mess with every girl, but like me and my cousin was talking the other day, like the he was like, man, look, you lucky you got somebody because the dating scene is terrible. I got chicks hitting me up talking about, I need some money for this, money for that. Like you got a job, like I'm just your friend right now. We not even dating. Like why you ask me for bread, like. So you gotta be appreciative to them people. And just the way they be coming yeah, about it, yeah, like, yeah. it ain't even like you, you know, know what, uh, no me, warm up to it. Yeah, just, like you I know, need cash my Metro PCS this. about to get turned off. You know, <laughs> right. I can reuse really that sixty <laughs> for real. So uh, yeah, we talking about the whole relationship and stuff like that, man. Like. Uh, and um, like I said, I'm not trying to be um, disrespectful as, as far as you saying your best friend was a dude. But prior um, episodes, we was talking about like being comfortable enough to have your girl or your man have a friend of the opposite sex. Like, mm-hmm. how was that? Because it seemed like her and, and um, God rest the day, like they was pretty close. Like, are you man enough to be able, like, you know, with they friends? Or it's like every man got some type of insecurities and stuff like that. Like, and women too. Like, is it okay for your your significant other to have? friends outside this you know saying you're sick i feel like i feel like you should talk about i mean obviously it's gonna be your question because right. i have a friend that's yeah. closer than my best friend now like mm-hmm. that we because like because a lot of times as dudes you know other dudes are dirt bags i mean you should, you should answer this because i have a friend i have a friend that's like my brother and he's like very involved in my yeah. life like we do basically everything okay together. well with you because i'm not gonna lie like <clears> i <throat> It's that'd be it's hard for me to do, man. I'm not gonna lie, like it's hard, but I'm somebody where I I, I pay attention first. Yeah. I'll come with the facts after I pay attention, and then once I like see what's causing or what makes me feel uneasy, I'll bring it to your attention. Yeah. But like first off, I wouldn't I wouldn't it, it would be hard to judge just because you don't know scenarios or you don't know history between people, you mm-hmm. know, or you don't know that relationship between two people. Yeah. So you I I just. I like to observe a lot. Yeah, like, for sure, observe yeah. and then, you know, but it it was cool. Like, everybody was cool to me from the jump, you mm-hmm. know. Like, her brother, uh, Squeeze, Jason Ford, he was one of the first people I met. Like, literally, like, when I first stepped foot into her house, he was there. Like, yeah. he was at her apartment. <laughs> right, like, <laughs> like him like, and we... one of her best friends, uh, Telly, like, yeah. they, they both were there. So, I met some of the most people, like, the most important and dearest people in her life mm-hmm. from the jump when I'm setting foot into the crib. So. Yeah. yeah, my family, like, I really, I'm not really that close to my family. Mm-hmm. Even though, like, I got I got five siblings, but, like, me and my sister is, like, this. Like, yeah. we, super, we super, super close. Okay. But, like, my brothers, they, like, kind of spread out. But when I got in college, that's when I really made my friends. Like, my, my brother, Squeeze, 
we was in poetry society together. So okay. like that was kind of one of those friends that kind of like transferred over and became family. Okay. Like that's probably the person I would have gave a shout out to, but that's like he like yeah, right yeah, in my yeah, circle. Family, you know? yeah. But I mean, um, it's weird because I think I have more of like the jealous vibe in our mm. relationship than he does. Yeah. But I know that I have guy friends, but yeah. I never make it I never. It's never anything you have to question. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. it's never anything where like any of my male friends are doing anything that will make them feel uncomfortable. And I'm sure like you would be a, you would, you would tell tell like listen man my man you, you step off like you tripping now like yeah but yeah. No, but the the relationships that I have with my friends are friendships you yeah, know what yeah, I mean sure, yeah. they're literally just friendships and they have been curated over such a long period of time like if he yeah. like he actually. When we first started dating, our first trip was to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And we went to his girl best friend's mm -hmm. house. Okay. Like, she lived in Hawaii. Her uh, husband was, like, an army guy. Okay. And so they lived on, on the base in Hawaii. And we went to go visit them. So, like, when we first started dating, that was, like, my first introduction to his side of his friendship, which was a whole other woman. You yeah. Know? And so that was something I had to get used to mm -hmm. because I wasn't used to that either but yeah. i think we both kind of like are always in situations where everything is open mm -hmm. and my friends respect my relationship mm -hmm. you know and it's nothing it's no history with any of my friends okay so it's not like you got to be like oh yeah you know they used to mess around yeah, so i need yeah, to yeah. think That's about that yeah, you know yeah, it's, yeah. it's never been anything like that actually he's my uh my my brother that's his best man yeah okay so that's what's you know up. Yeah. like they actually like end up developing a relationship and a closeness mm -hmm. you know from our friendship because we were we we are a crew like kyle me my brother squeeze and my sister slim like we're basically like a collective we do everything together like okay. he's the co-host of of word wednesday we just did a takeover at the wealthy store like mm -hmm. we do a lot of things together and we're kind of like really diverse because like squeeze he's really into production like he is our person if we want to have an event we like look this is the event help us yeah. turn it into a uh, actual reality yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's also a poet so we perform like when we do the poetry scene i perform he perform he's a rapper he perform my sister is an artist and she like paints mm -hmm. so like she'll do live paintings okay. portraits of people you know we all stick together so i think it's yeah. really like just being honest up front, you know, I'm not like hiding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I'm not yeah, like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, you know, you just oh, this not wrong. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because you have to, I think it's just about being honest and, you know, yeah. you have to introduce your, when you're in a relationship, you have to introduce that person mm -hmm. that you're in a relationship with to the people that are important to you. Yeah. And if they're important to you, then you know that they're not going to be crossing any boundaries yeah, or doing yeah, anything doing that's going to make something for. exactly yeah. uncomfortable. And it's never been anything like that because I've always been such a tomboy so yeah. most of my friends are guys yeah. so yeah I know you, I'm hearing you and you you know these are friends that's been around for years what about new friends that developing friends from like it could be work or what y'all do is, is that allowed I don't got none <laughs> yeah. I don't really I don't, I don't, trust, I don't <laughs> trust it I don't trust it yeah okay like, so that's what I'm talking gotta, about it's kind of got to be some history too yeah. right like, because now it'd be like it'd be like girls that be trying to come around and they'd be a little bit too friendly and I'm yeah. like I, I'm I check girls all the time yeah. it's probably too much I don't, I don't <laughs> care because I just know that girls are opportunists sometimes oh, yeah, hell yeah. you know so it's for me I'm like why are you here who yeah. are you here with what do you you know mm -hmm. But yeah, when you got that history though, that's a little different. Like especially, like I said, if it was like just some close relationship, like y'all real tight yeah. friends, then that's cool. But anything new, like <laughs> out the blue, yeah, I'm not really with like guys and women in relationship making friends with like single people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not really, I'm not really like a fan of that. Yeah. Just because I even I watched a little, a blo I was looking at it like a vlog the other day, and this guy was just saying that the problem is when you have like a single woman trying to be friends with a guy that's in a relationship, mm -hmm. once they start building that relationship, they start looking at them as like a beacon. You yeah. know, it's like, I like this about you, or I like mm -hmm. this about you, or I like how you treat your girl like this, and they start yeah, then, visualizing yeah, themselves. Like, yeah. Exactly, yeah, like, and they start yeah, seeing the things that, that they me. like. <laughs> right. exactly. yeah. And then that turns from like, a potential friendship to a potential opportunity, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And that's the thing, that's, that's why, 
it's more comfortable for me for us to hang out with people who are already in relationships. Yeah, that's what I was telling my fiance, like her friend and um her husband, like, dog, we should kick it with them, like invite them over and stuff like that, like more of a relationship type of, you know, saying friendship and whatever. Yeah, like, because it's just it's just more comfortable because yeah. you don't feel like someone is getting to know your significant other for you know other reasons. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's okay. just a lot of women. Guys are more attractive when they're in relationships. Oh, like yeah. whether you guys know it or not, but it's like especially women see that proposal, like, like oh Kyle, oh yeah, he right, proposed exactly. good. Like for real, <laughs> like it's been so many times where I posted pictures of our relationships and girls have hopped in my DM and like. Do we got a brother? And I was like, yeah. no, Pia only child. Yeah. And they yeah. Were like, he don't got a cousin? Like, no, no. he <laughs> Like, no, sorry, can't help you. Man, like, yeah, that's crazy. I'm just fine in this house. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> All right, let me ask you all this then before we uh, take a turn. I want to talk about your business too before we end things or whatever. Um, we talk about relationships like the phone. How is like we me, me, me and my one homeboy was talking about the cell phone. Was there ever a time in y'all relationship was like you you went through each other's phone? I just be honest though. Oh, we got each other's me. passwords. We I'm can go through face, each other's yeah, phones anytime. Face, uh, uh, now, I say I say okay. Now you say y'all know each other's passwords. Do it. Do all right. Let me see. Do y'all go through each other's phone? Have y'all ever did that? I do. I do. Sometimes I don't, but she can. <laughs> I don't care. But my thing is this: like, like, sometimes like, it's like a job. You got like, oh, okay. I ain't checked in two weeks. Let me see what the. Like, so. That's me. That's me. But that's because like he already he knows I got bad trust issues. Like I got real. I have real bad trust issues, and it's not like. It's, it's something that I'm like actively working on yeah. and I work on it with him yeah. but he's like I don't got nothing to hide yeah. you can have access so yeah. if you want to look go ahead it's not really but see, like my, a thing I, I said something to somebody else I'll be so stupid I'm going to look in 2006 when I didn't know who you were like damn oh, you was yeah. a freak trust, trust me I know every, I didn't look <laughs> through any, any text message like, that's ever been oh, created so I, I've seen it so I've seen 06 you were just you were just talking all crazy right exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like, oh. you wasn't shit oh, 06 you know what don't say shit to me oh, oh, 06 you was a right exactly I'm like oh you want to see how you, oh you want to do things okay, see that's why I can't do it because you, you go back yeah, and you're like oh this I'm is a bad bad like, I'm going to look back like Oh, so back February 18th, 2005, right. you was, you, this was a week, man, that's, no, that's, I can't do it. That's me, because I can't I, do it, because I'm going like, to have a headache there. I'm going to be, <laughs> first, day, first day Facebook opened up, you was talking to motherfucker Donald, like, what up? <laughs> <laughs> that's me, because I know, like, Kyle, Kyle is like, he's such an undercover person, like, he, he tell, he tell me a lot, but it's, yeah. some, it's some stuff that he don't tell me, and I'd be like, yeah, what see, I ain't about to argue on, on this show. I ain't about to ask that question. Yeah. <laughs> it's like stuff just to ease her mind, though. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Because, I, no, I mean, it really... Cause but that cell phone could be de death. Because I remember times in my old relationship, I was taking showers and had the phone on my hip, and I'm butt naked. I can't be on my hip. That boy stuck right there, though, like, what up? But I'll that's, take a, you know, what was you doing? You know what I dirt. mean? What's, exactly. I, say, I remember I say the girl named as Brandon, and she called my phone like, why you got me say this to Brandon? I'm like, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I'm in relationship. Like, I was doing so much dirt, man. Mm, that's, see, thank God that's I'm not the like thing that. I be scared. Of, <laughs> I be scared of stuff like that. That's but no, see, I that's the like, old way. Like, that was me. Like, this back in the day. Like, that's when you young, just don't you be on some stupid stuff. No excuses, but I was just young. Like, I had a kid, but I felt like as long as my kid taken care of, I could do whatever I want. Right. Plus, you had you was in a long relationship yeah. in high school, so you really yeah. didn't have like so that like we ain't, time. Like that, I can't even say for her. Like we both, you know, we went straight to being adults as young as as young youngsters. Mm -hmm. You know, so we went straight to like having a responsibility, taking care of that, and trying to you know saying do good by each other. So of course you had it. You know, saying you curious of like how it is to you know damn can I get her or I guess with her can I get him? And that's how it crumbled. But I mean, it's all good. You know, what I'm saying. Shit, we both did better without each other. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we're going to talk about your, your business. Because uh, I know you said your business first, then poetry second. Mm -hmm. So, when did you start the uh, simple dot natural. natural? When did mm -hmm. you start that? And what was like? What was the um, the motivation behind that, like starting that? Okay, so my business officially launched July 4th, 2019. That's my half birthday. Okay. 4th of July. Um, so... It started because my baby, she was five at the time, and she had super bad eczema. Like, it was real bad. Like, mm. she couldn't sleep through the night. She was, like, scratching nonstop. And so, I, we were at the uh, doctor, and I'm like, we need some solutions. 
and they had her on this uh prescription where it was two weeks on two weeks off so it's super strong and i'm like that sounds kind of dangerous you know if it's something that Mm-hmm. A five year old is on that they can't even take every day. You know, yeah. like you gotta take a break from it. Yeah, that's some yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's kinda kinda bad. So I talked to my um her pediatrician and she was like <coughs> excuse me. She was like, Maybe you should try a natural route. <clears throat> so I go to the store, try and find something natural mm-hmm. and first thing I see is like a vino, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like supposed to be really good for you but you look at the ingredient list and you like i don't know what none of this stuff is i don't know what none of this say like is this really good yeah so i decided to try and find out something natural myself so like excuse me i went into it um with the goal to have something that was chemical free Mm -hmm. natural safe for kids you Mm -hmm. know and that was gonna help her sleep through the night. Okay. <clears throat> and so I started testing products. Like I started doing research. I be telling people like I got a Google and YouTube degree. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Cause I literally like went and like I would read like skincare blogs mm. and watch vlogs and watch you know like a lot of different things. So mm. I started mixing up different products and okay. different solutions. And then after a while, I finally found something that got her to stop scratching like yeah. all through the night. Yeah. And then after a while, you know, her skin started to, you know, improve. And so I was like, cool. And at that time, during the process, I was like sharing my journey on Facebook. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is what I'm thinking about doing. You know, this is what I'm working on. This is how it's going. So I kind of like share my story during the process of creating it. And I asked the question, like, how many other parents are having this problem? And it was like an overwhelming amount of people who was like, yeah, I'm having this problem too. Yeah. So with that, I'm like, okay. So after I found solutions that was working for her skin, you know, stop inflammation, stop like the scratching. I'm like, I now I need something that's gonna start healing her skin, like something that's gonna help with the scarring, you yeah. know, help just like overall getting softer skin. And then mm. I came up with another product. Mm. So after I start sending those out to people, I was like, okay, cool. You know, yeah. people filling these products, you know, it's working. Mm. So now I'm like, it's time for me to turn into a business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So start working on my branding. You know, once you have a product, then it's like, okay, this is a blank slate. Yeah. yeah. So now it's like, now what? Like, like, what's what's the name gonna be? What's, yeah, the, yeah. what's the thought behind how you it? Gonna gonna be? it you know, like how yeah. it's gonna? Cause I make. I make body butters and a lot of people make body butters. A lot of people use different ingredients, you know, different processes Mm. and stuff like that. But I'm like, what can I do to stand out? Yeah. And that's kind of how everything was born, you know? So the the name of my company is simple dot natural. Basically the thought behind that is just, I truly believe that nature gives us everything that we need. Like I really believe that, we don't have to go to crazy scientific practices sometimes to get the re- results we need. Like, number one, we need water. You know, like, yeah. drink more water. Mm-hmm. You know, change your diet a little bit. Eat more veggies and stuff like that. And then use natural products. Yeah. So, my products are all plant-based, mm-hmm. vegan, all natural, chemical-free products. Mm-hmm. And they're really good for you. So, they're better for you than even using lotion. So, that was, like, kind of my thing. And then theme of my brand is healing takes time Mm. because during the process of like finding out like what products work Mm. what products don't work one thing i noticed is that when people start using the skincare product most of the times what they're missing is the consistency Mm -hmm. it's like a lot of people like to start using a product and then they stop using it after like a week or a day or something because they're like it doesn't work that's just like like you said with the whole eating good like just stuff like that yeah like you expect Mm -hmm. stuff to happen just like that exactly so basically like consistency is the number one thing that people are missing so the thing behind my brand is healing takes time and i named all of my products after a time of day just to remind you like you need to use it at least once a day because it's going to start improving your skin so the first uh product that launched our company is called 9 p.m okay and it has it's scented with essential oils and it's really good just like nighttime. It's really soothing. It's really mm-hmm. good for your skin. And then uh, our other one is 7 a.m. And then for Black Friday, I released 5 a.m. And I actually brought you a simple pack that's so you can try them. Yeah. But yeah, that's ba- like basically the re- the way my uh, company started is just me being like a mm-hmm. mom 
that was trying to get something that was gonna help her baby because she was like, right? She was like, oh, <laughs> she was sleep. She couldn't sleep through the night. Like she was scratching uncontrollably. She was like you all literally the time. could hear her scratching yeah. like in her sleep, like just Man. nonstop with it. Mm -hmm. It was crazy, and I'm like, I gotta do something. Yeah, like I have to figure out something. So this is basically like all because of my daughter. You know, okay. I wouldn't have never been interested in skincare if it wasn't yeah. for her. And yeah, because you had no, yeah, because this is being a good mother trying to figure out some type of way. Then right. like, damn, I can. Benefit off of this, or right? Quick. <laughs> I mean, now, like it was, it was a lot of people that actually just wanted that same, you know, solution. They wanted, a, they wanted relief. They wanted help with their kids. So mm -hmm. now I've shipped to over twenty three states in the U S. You know, mm -hmm. like we're a national company, anywhere from like California, New York, Florida, Georgia, like mm -hmm. all over. Okay, uh, and now, now that's another question. Be that can go for both of y'all with your business and with your music. What do you look for to build off of this? Like, are you looking for a label? Are you looking for this to be like your primary source of income? So I definitely uh, want this company to be my primary source of income. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because like one of the things that I infuse with my company is I have like on my bottles. For the directions, I have a poem okay. that I wrote on yeah, there yeah, to like yeah. show people That's like dope. how to yeah. use it. Yeah. And so it's just kind of like I really like having this business because it lets me infuse everything that I really care about. Mm -hmm. So like I care about poetry, I care about designing, mm -hmm. I care about you know uh, recycling, I care about skincare, I care about vegan products, yeah. you know all that stuff. And so me having a company lets me have the freedom mm -hmm. to choose what I what part of me I want to show. You know mm -hmm. what part of me is important because I could easily come out with products that smell. I could come out with a million and one yeah. scents, you know, <laughs> using fragrance oils. Yeah. But the fact that I want to keep it natural, I only use essential oils. You yeah, know, and yeah. that's something that's kind of like important to me. Okay, just to keep it as natural as possible, as simple as possible. You know, like one of my one of my products only has like five ingredients. In it. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of natural, like, I know you going through a natural thing with your hair, like, as far as how hard is that, like, no perms, none of that stuff, none of that chemical stuff you put in your hair, because my girl tried it, it'd be, a, it'd be hard, like, she, she be on for, like, three weeks, then one day she's like, no, I need to straighten this one. <laughs> <laughs> like, how difficult is that, because it kind of, I, I heard from women, like, it's hard to get a style or whatever, like, it's more difficult to do it natural than it is to, you know. Definitely, it's more expensive, but I do my own hair. I, mm. um, I've been natural, I think I did the Big Chop in 2018. Yeah. And ever since then, I just been. I feel like having natural hair, it kind of changes a lot. Like yeah. the way that people see you, mm. it's it's different. I it's know like you got whole, that one poem. You like don't touch my. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and, and that's that's for real. Like it really. It really changes people's thought process of you. Like I remember, I was getting my eyelashes done one time, and this girl was like. Girl, I just could not walk around with my hair looking like that, and yeah. I'm just like at the same in the same breath. It's another girl like, yeah. oh my gosh, how did you yeah. get your hair like that? Like I love it, but it's just more like a freedom. Like when I yeah. for a while, I was feeling kind of like, like my my self esteem was a little bit different because mm -hmm. I had shorter length hair before I cut yeah. it, yep. and then I cut it down to like nothing, and yeah. it's still. But my hair now is like is even though it don't look that long, but it's longer than it was originally. Yeah. It's healthier, mm -hmm. and I find that it just gives me more confidence just because. I need to put you in touch with my fiance because like I said, she be trying to go through that stuff and trying to find styles and different things to use and all that stuff. So yeah, I do, and it's it's just. It's a dead. It's it's being dedicated, you know. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of things you just challenge yourself. Like even being in a relationship, being this, it's a decision. You know, you decide that you want to be faithful. Yeah. And like doing a big chop is the same thing. Like I decided that I'm gonna have my hair natural. So you have to learn. Mm -hmm. And I worked with different products, and you know, I test different things on my hair, and you look for like people to help you. Yeah. You can't just go into it blind and just expect like, okay, well, I'm just gonna figure this out because I didn't been through tons of products yeah. you know like tons of companies tons of products tons tons of like uh processes mm -hmm. and like my twist outs which is like a style where like you twist your hair out in like it's whatever yeah um, so I, I like girl stuff really, like, <laughs> i was really interested in doing like twist outs on my hair and i used to do them all the time and they wasn't coming out right and so i actually talked to another black owned business shout out to unicurl mm -hmm. uh i talked to the business owner of that company and i was telling her about my struggles and i'm like 
this is what I do. I feel yeah. like I'm doing it right. And she gave me all these tips. Yeah. And she was like, this is probably what you're not doing. This is probably what you're missing. And once she gave me that, like, I'm my good hair, to go. Yeah. Right? Exactly. <laughs> I was like, dang. You know, I didn't know it was something that simple. Yeah. Well, let me know when you figure it. out something as far as growing hair. Oh yeah, I'm for me. So I give me. She already working on that. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me know. I want to be a first dude. I'm buy into that company. I'm put my whole life savings. In. I'm trying to get my. <laughs> okay, so with you, like as far as like with the music, man, like are you looking for a label? Or are you you want to stay indie, a partnership, or it's you more just of a do partnership? A you know, I I feel like uh, I'm a very well educated individual when it mm. comes to uh distribution and just the process behind releasing your music mm -hmm. um so i don't i don't unless it's like a win-win situation i wouldn't really necessarily feel the need to sign to a label yeah. at at any point just making sure you have the right people around that could create a stronger partnership yeah. is what i aim for and focus towards so that's the main thing that's why i gotta give the shout out to motown they have those events yeah. where you can learn more uh, one of the books that I'm reading right now is uh, Robert Passman. He's talking, it's the 10th edition, talking about things you need to know in the music business. Yeah. He breaking down like the way contracts are, mm. distribution deals, mm. indie versus major, like, but on a deeper, grand, like, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, this is the stuff people don't even know about. Like, yeah. like one thing that I actually plan on focusing on, and I don't mean get off topic, yeah. like, I plan on releasing, like, a lot of younger generation use TikTok. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sitting here one day like, man, I ain't even like this type of person to be <laughs> yeah. on TikTok yeah. making a fool of myself, you know, yeah. having fun. So, yeah. you know, I thought about it. I was like, I know so much, like, I, I know so much uh, good advice. I know so much information about mm -hmm. streaming. So I plan on like making a Friday feedback and yeah. like putting tips, like just recording a video and telling tips of like ways that other artists, things yeah. other artists don't have any clue of yeah. that you would assume other artists would know, like yeah. that yeah. you just passing that information along. Mm -hmm. And that's honestly one of the biggest things I've learned. Uh, the Detroit scene is different. Yeah. Like, the Detroit scene is different because I, if you ask me, a lot of people don't really want to pass on, Hell you no. know, <laughs> the plug to the next person. Yeah, like, no, no. oh, you got to work like I had to work. Yeah. Fuck all that. Yeah. And it's so many people that it's like an old school generation on that, but the younger generation isn't on that. Yeah. And the younger generation is what's going to be leading the future, you know. Mm -hmm. And I understand the older generation from that aspect. But at the same time, you can't expect people to represent your city a certain way. You can't expect them to be, to be the next voice of the city in a certain way if you're not helping mm -hmm. teach them and lead them. Oh, so yeah, for sure. Yeah, say it's, it's free to give advice, man. Like, that costs nothing. For real. It's nothing, it's <laughs> nothing all, man. It's all. nothing. If I know something, I'm going to give you. I hope I can get that same feedback. You feel me? Like, that's it. That's like, what I'm saying, bro. So Because people are too stingy with information. Like, you yeah. got something to help me. Like, we can help each other and build together. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Build it bigger yeah. and together. Man. That's what people don't be understanding, yeah. man. Because people are so scared that that person getting on before them. Right. Instead of that person. That's do, enough for us all yeah. to eat. If that yes. person do get on, guess what? He got, he got the resources to pull us all up and stuff like it's not about individual like it's about us i don't care like me and my uncle to all the time shit hey if you make it you know i'm mooching right like we about to we about to feed off each other like for real me him my brother like hey with first one come that's gonna be a person with the resources we're gonna build off of that and just keep it moving but that's, that's how it is with our collective like yeah. literally everybody does something and yeah. when one person got something going on Shoot, you were putting all of Yeah, that's what I yeah. really, like, I, I had posted the other day, and I was like, anytime I get an opportunity for me, I turn into an opportunity for we. Yeah, like, you, you got know, to. like, when you was messaging me about yeah. it, I'm like, you know, my fiance is available yeah. if you want to like, come bring him on. Like, Hell yeah. Know, Hell so yeah. That's one of those things. It's like, shoot, if I'm going to talk about myself, I can have you talk about him too. Yeah. You, know? we can you got to. Because like I said, even with the basketball stuff, she brought me on as a coach. But I'm like, damn, my aunt do pictures and videos. Hey, he do this. All right, bring him on. So now right. we all in this together. Exactly. You feel me? Yep. So yeah, because like I said, I had messaged you like in January. I, every night I go through like random people send them my my, my uh my podcast and be like, hey, you want to get on? Like mm -hmm. we can build off each other. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes, man. And then we can all eat. 
It ain't all about like just me, me, me. Like it's too many me people, man. Right. It gotta be us. And then if it's us, then we building up like we say those schools in in the in the, in the suburbs building up. They cause they do that shit together, man. Yes, like the parents putting in money into the schools. Like we could do the same thing in Detroit Public Schools. Yeah. Yes, they do. And that's and you know what? It's funny because like at my daughter's school, they they raise money <laughs> through PTO. Yeah. Like, they that's they made like fifty k last yeah, year, and I'm yeah. like. Hey, <laughs> yeah, for real. From PTO. Yeah. But they doing, they do like the smallest things. Like they have a bagel Wednesday where they overcharging the kids. <laughs> yeah. Like you got to bring $3,000. So bagel. No, and that bagel costs like 50 cents. Right, exactly. <laughs> but you know, but it's still, they yeah. know that they need to but take that money and use it somewhere else. Now, I know. asked them about the music. Is it money and poetry? Like, oh, definitely. Like, definitely. I'm just, this is me being like, clue. Yeah, it's I, I, definitely man. money and poetry. It's money in a few different ways. So, number one, the the easiest way I would say is being hired to be a feature. Mm -hmm. So, like, let's say 90s or like Liquids and Libations or like Word Wednesday. What they usually do is they don't pay the poets directly, but you mm -hmm. get on stage, you spit, and then they pass around like offering. Okay. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I'll take it even one step further once you're done explaining. Yeah, and like that, that that's like an easy way for, you know, people to show their love and admiration, but also. So, it's situations where if you hit me up and you want me to perform, I'm like, this is my performance fee. Yeah, and yeah, And you yeah. pay that performance fee, okay. you know. So, that's something, like, any performer has. Mm -hmm. It's some poets that take it, you know, a little step further, you mm -hmm. know, and they already have that kit that's already ready. Like, look, if you want to have me booked, mm -hmm. this is what you pay. Yeah. And then also, it's competitions. So, like, one, it's like a, one that's really popular called Half Step Poetry Slam where you can enter to to like perform and the prize is five hundred dollars okay so it's it's a lot of different avenues that you can go people write poetry books mm -hmm. yeah add on to that which i want to get her into i haven't <laughs> told her yet though <laughs> poets literally can distribute their music same way musicians do it man no, our, that was my plan i planned on like yeah, yeah. basically like Make an album or something yeah, like that, I, yeah. that was, that's like one of my goals this year is to like record like a lot of people do it's like comedy albums books, and stuff but yeah. i want to do a poetry album and have it like on Spotify and like Apple Music and stuff like that because yeah. I feel like that's something that a lot of poets don't take advantage mm. of. But I have like resources, obviously, you know, yeah. Yeah. so I know more about like copywriting yeah, and like yeah, having yeah. my stuff distributed on platforms and stuff like that. So, okay. but I mean, before we get to like the last part of the uh, podcast with you, I see with your EPs is mostly like five or six songs or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, are, is that purposely done until you like release your whole album or you get big, yeah? Big so, enough? so I. Although a lot of people have been telling me you just need to make this album and put yeah. it out, like I'll, I've always been, you know, Most trying to make sure I build it up yeah. and focus it to the point where everybody wants that piece yeah. of work. So that's why I try to, you know, I offer an EP half of that, you yeah. know, or you know, give you a snippet of whatever emotions at that time is going mm. through because that's what like like heart to heart the first one first ep is a completely different vibe than the than the second heart yeah, to heart you know? the second one i gotta go back like, yeah I've been going so, from back you know, yeah, exactly yeah. and like you can hear that so like first heart to heart you know it's like us entering our relationship us meeting getting to know each other you know yeah. and second heart to heart is just like you know, like it's more like the grind. That's what I want. Yeah, you know, yeah, for sure. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Uh, but um, all right. Now, before we get to the other thing, as far as like the uh, end of the, what's the name, I ask these questions. I got a top three. Mm -hmm. So my top three is like I always start off top three, childhood crushes. Mm. <laughs> like celebrities. Yeah. People clown me. For okay, mines. so look, my uh, <laughs> my my childhood crushes was. For real. Okay. I used to love for real. I was still a super young. <laughs> Duh. I used to love for real. I don't know what it was about him, but like that song with him and like him and Snoop. Snoop. Oh, it was a girl in these gray sweatpants in that, in that video. I saw you. I <laughs> 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 I know exactly what you're talking about too, boy. That video was amazing. I yeah, that, that was like that was like my number one. And then I used to love Cassidy. Okay, Cassidy. Yeah, he told terrible his bad rapper now. Man, he's Cassidy so was one of the, he was, I don't care. He was one of the coldest freestylers. He was. He was. At the Period. time, he was. Like, he was cold. Like freestyling couldn't mm -hmm. be touched. Like definitely. Hell yeah. Cassidy for real. Those are, those are my people. Okay. For sure. Well, you ain't got a third one. Uh, let me think. I 
never really been crazy over celebrities. Yeah, he wasn't like one of them Bow Wow, no. B2K, mm-hmm. Lil Romeo. No, no, no. I never did none. none Chris of, Brown. I never liked none of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I never really been to celebrities. Okay, we go to them too. What about you, man? What's your top three celebrity crushes? I can't think of a third one. I say top two for sure is uh, Beyonce and Megan Good. Make, oh, man, good, mine's for sure. I kind of <laughs> mad that make good smoke cigarettes now, though. It kind of turned me over. Yeah. You didn't know? She yes, man. Yeah, like, everybody. Yeah. So, it was, I don't know what oh, day I it was. That. It was, like, released on Twitter. It was a whole fuck yeah. with her smoking. Like, oh, literally, yeah. it was caught. Like, yeah. Oh, Jesus got her straight out. Man, man. <laughs> All right, what about uh, y'all top three rappers? Uh, definitely mm. Jay-Z. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, but back then or, like, right now? Just uh, your top overall, three, period. Oh, yeah. overall? Oh, Drake, definitely. Mm-hmm. Drake, uh, Kendrick, and... I don't know. Hove, you guys say you say you're a big Hove fan. You got me in your top three, if you like. <laughs> I know for overall, yeah, for over, all time, I'm definitely gonna say. Uh, okay, wait, wait, wait. For all, all yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I'm gonna say Drake, <laughs> Jay Z, and Kendrick because I feel like Good Kid, Mad City was probably like one of the best pieces of. I like what's ain't better. I like that one. I like To Pimp a Butterfly better. I was just rocking nope. out to that earlier yeah. this week. I was just see, my mine, mine's is uh is is, is Pac, Nas, and Wayne. I love Wayne too, but like I just feel like. Good Kid, Mad City. That it was cold. When I heard it was that, it was like one of the most moving it was pieces. Because he gave you a good ass story. Yeah, and like, exactly. people be sleeping. in one day. Yeah. yeah. So, what's name did that same type of thing? Like, people were sleeping on that first YG album. Oh, I don't listen to him. Oh, oh no. yeah, yeah. That first yeah. one was sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. talking about My Crazy Life? Yeah. Yeah, My that, Crazy Life was he, crazy. And that's why he ain't. Like, that's why nobody respect them because that first album was so good. After that, it's just a bad drop off. Yeah, I mean, he just really it was. Did, like kind of yeah. like the industry, like top forty yeah. kind of music. Like, what about your uh, your top three? It's hard. I don't have a top three. I got a <laughs> top, top five. five. All right, top go ahead, five. go ahead. Top five. You good. So my top five in no specific order. They're gonna be Big Sean, J Cole, Drake. <laughs> Kendrick Lamar, Childish Gambino. Childish Gambino, dope. I love Atlanta, dog. That's like the man. That show is man. funny. That shit's so funny, dog. He's so versatile, and that's why he like one of my idols. My job, all right, my top five is, is Pop, Nas, Wayne, DMX. Okay. And I had to probably put, damn, I want to say Biggie, Biggie. Then I got Cole at six. Okay. All right, if I'm going to add, too, I'm definitely going to... I'm going to add Ludacris because people think on him because, like, even going back... But Ludacris got that same type of vibe Big Sean got, too, though. I've been listening yeah. to his flow, and it's just so good. It's he different. makes some real good music. And then I'll add J. Cole in because Forest Hill Drives... Oh, that hell was yeah. another beautiful That's the first... I only been to one concert in my life, surprisingly, and my fiancé took me to a J. Cole concert. Really? To oh, see it was that lit, one. wasn't it? Hell yeah. I'm it like, was, damn. Yeah, we went to... Uh, we actually... He went to a J. Cole concert. We went to a Kendrick concert together, and Kendrick brought J. Cole out. Oh, yeah. And I've never been so hyped <laughs> in my life. I was like... Oh. And Travis Scott opened up at the same concert. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. All right, what's yeah. your, what were your top three Detroit rappers, if you can do it? Mm. I know you, you want to go Big first Sean. or me. Yeah, I was going to say, you want to go first? You wanna I'm go definitely going to say Big Sean, T. Grizzly, mm-hmm. Kyle Mack. Okay. Ooh. Oh, you got this. Oh. I'm going to say my three uh, for sure, Big Sean. You know who I've been becoming a super fan of. Sada Baby? No. <laughs> no. I rock with Sada Baby and I rock, I rock with that generation. No, no, no. I rock with that generation. Sada Baby, you know, he get me moving when I get the liquor in me, you know. But I would say Royce the Five Nine. Hey, wait, man. That last, this last album? Oh, I haven't. This is the dog, thing. I haven't even it. listened to it yet because I wanted to literally just. I've, I've been and busy. He, I'm like, man. I want to sit and he down. Did, he did like all the production for this too. For I really real? Just, yeah, it's like, a let dope. Me t- let me tell you about T. Hold on. I ain't got my first person yet. I'm crashing my bag. Wow. Hold on. Okay. All right. Dang. Big Sean right, Royce. So, yep. Big Sean Royce. Man. It, it, the third one is kind of hard. I will say because I will say Eminem for sure is yeah. one, one of the top three. Mm. But it is... The new age that I do like, I wouldn't put Sada Baby on that level, but it's yeah. like, it's like you a fourth Sada Baby T Grizzly fourth fifth yeah. rounders, excuse yeah. me, fourth fifth picks, cause like, like that's the, the new generation. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. they're showing different ways that yeah. you could do it completely different than the older you know yeah, generations. Yeah. See, mine's would be uh, mine's would be Big Hurt, mine's would be Big Sean, mine's would be Eminem. That fourth and five be KDZ and payroll. Okay. Oh, I used to love KDZ. Yeah, KDZ. I used boy. to man. First off, Free <laughs> Rock was one of. I 
listened to that <laughs> album so much. Man, like, yeah. It was nonstop. Like, KD's, but, it was the first time I really, like, thought Count My Dope Money. I know, and, Count My Dope yeah, Money. Yeah, I'm like, oh, shit, sweet. Money. Yeah, they had the flow, oh, you know, like, they had the flow in the kitchen, like, you oh, just shit. took me back to high school. KD's used to be my man. Oh, my God. Hell, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? That's the reason why I like T Grizzly, because T Grizzly, he kind of gave me that Detroit vibe. Yeah, you know, I respect like, his grind. The like Boys, the, yeah. you know, the, like, the Blade, you know, like, when they really used to be talking about stuff, like, it's mm. funny because I always be like, everybody around the world talking about Persian. Like, y'all don't even know what Persian yeah, is. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> y'all know what Persian is. Like, Man. Okay, <laughs> let me, give me y'all top three TV shows. Ooh. Mm. I let y'all think of it. You talking now or you talking about in general? Forever. Mine is Martin, Fresh Prince, and then San Francisco. Man, uh, man, you got some real popular ones. Okay. Okay, you want to go low key then? No, it's yeah, yeah. No, I want to hear. Like new day, uh, I go with the um, I go with Snowfall. If I'm talking about some new stuff, people been talking about that show. I gotta get. Man, hell yeah, I'm so glad FX and Hulu got a partnership coming out, so I could catch up on all those. Snowfall, Atlanta. Ooh. And I like I like the shy. Mm. Okay, I'm definitely voting Blackish as my as yeah. Blackish. I, I ain't got to that. I gotta go peep that. Look, it's funny. Blackish it's, is slept it's on. It's yeah. slept. Is Blackish is really. It's a lot on. of relatable stuff in that. Yeah, yeah. In and that they show. really they really bring up a lot of black topics. Like we fell asleep watching it last <laughs> night, and it was talking about how. They kids grew up in the suburbs, but they scared of black people. Yeah. They don't like go to the hood enough, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But blackish definitely that's 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 my that's my show. What other show do I be like waiting on? Hmm. <sighs> Mm -mm -mm. Oh, you know what? Wu Tang. That's a good show. I didn't watch that one. I heard that was good. The Wu Tang. It is, is, it yeah, is a fire. really good show. It's a good show. It's a good show. I like that. Um, man, I used to watch a lot of shows. I'm kind of like cutting back because <laughs> This Is Us was my show for a while, but it got kind of like too much. Yeah. And How to Get Away with Murder was my show for a while, but that kind of like went too far. Yeah. So I don't know. It's kind of hard to choose. Mm. What about you, Kyle? Man, it's hard. So I got, I got two. Well, I got two for sure. <laughs> But my third one is very difficult. So yeah. I say, How I Met Your Mother, that's for sure number one. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, Seinfeld, number two. <laughs> uh, three, it's like, it's it's in between like Martin, Fresh Prince, and Living Single. Yeah, Living Single is dope. Though. I'd even say the Wayans Brothers, too, because that yeah, used well, to be fuck, my I show. told you Wayans Brothers is cold, man. Wayans Brothers used to be Marlo, my real. dog, man. For real. Marlo, my dog. But you know, I'm not picking. I'm not picking Fresh Prince or Martin because they just even though that, I used there. to watch them, it 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 ain't like now how like to go back and be like, oh, I'm about to binge watch this. Sometimes, I will though. You know, I Every really day. Don't be, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I really don't. I haven't given it a chance as an adult again mm -hmm. to like go back and watch it. So oh, I do for sure. Top three. This is hard because top three movies. Oh, I love movies. Okay. These are three favorite go to yeah, movies. I, I, okay, yeah, that's one. Well, movies too, is easier year. for me to choose. Okay. Definitely Infinity War. Mm. Avengers Infinity Infinity War. It's crazy. War. I didn't start getting to the whole Marvel Jung until my fiance. Man. And my son, my fiance, the reason why I had to I was forced into it. I love it. So <laughs> you better watch out. They probably gonna make you get Disney Plus, bro. Man. <laughs> it's worth it. You. It's worth it. So Dream Girls. Mm -hmm. Dream Girls. Infinity War and oh a third movie. Uh, I'm gonna have to pick Dark Knight. Okay, and my fancy crowd. What's name died? Uh, what's my man's name? Ooh. And the last one. Oh, Stark. Tony Stark. Yeah, she was there. But I'm looking like man. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. What's yours, dog? Man, um, my top three movies. My, see, I'm so. That's how I know I got old parents. I'm like, I'm just so old. Yeah, you picked San Francisco. Mine's and is, I'm like, my, I got, <laughs> my, mine's is Bronx Tales. Okay. Shawshank Redemption. Okay. And Friday. I like Friday. <laughs> I like Friday. I like that Friday pick for sure. Yeah. Uh, I would say for next sure Friday one my, of my. Friday uh, after next is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Friday. Friday. And it's a Christmas movie. I like Friday. <laughs> it's, it's I like a Christmas Friday. movie, though. Uh, I'm going to say Think Like a Man. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ray. Ray was dope. Mm. It's hard. See, I got a movie. I was say Inception as my third one. Inse Ooh, yeah. that's a clutch pick. What's, what's your, what's my, your music? Uh, huh? What's your, you said you got a music movie? Yeah, I said Dream Girls. Okay. You know, that's based off the Supremes. Mm -hmm. I wish I could list all music movies. Like, I <laughs> love music. Like, I have a yeah, huge ass collection of music movies. Go ahead, go ahead, music movies. My junk is what's name, though, dog? Because um, every time I watch the movie, I got to watch it. 
Whoop that trick. What's that? Uh, oh, hustle and oh, yeah. love. Yeah. I literally, literally when they made the beat yesterday. for Whoop that trick was yes. the hypest scene ever. Was, we literally was. was just talking boom, about how they won boom, the Oscars. Boom, boom. I remember watching the movie and I was like, I need this track. Where's <laughs> Bear Share? Line wide. Dude, what's up? The beat was just like that. Beat get you hype. Like you be in the, you be like. The funny thing is, Anthony Anderson in the movie. Yeah. Oh, I man, like, like, he like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Like, oh shit, what you about? To, yeah, it was. Then he man. started spitting like, man, that joke was cold, man. Yeah, I used to know the words to that song. Yeah, me too. I was trying to think of it right now. Like we like, open that boy up. No, DJ, it's the name. I think like, what's your name, DJ? Like, dog, no, no, you already remember being in the club, though. Like, yeah, like you gonna curry? Like, oh, that man, shit, right? Right. it was a whole. It wasn't even meant to be a dance to it, <laughs> and it turned into a dance. Like, like, her ass, like, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Get him. Right. Oh, uh, yes, man. Oh, that my God. Thing, you were in the background. Get him. Yeah. Man. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all uh, top three uh, hoopers? We talking about basketball. Mm. LeBron, LeBron, LeBron. No, just saying. Like, <laughs> I believe it. No, no. No, no. I like other rap. I like other basketball players. Mine is Kobe, Jordan, and Isaiah Thomas. Mm. Mm. I'm definitely going to have to say LeBron, Steph Curry, Gotta true. show, gotta show love to the shooter of all time, mm -hmm. and hmm, I'm gonna have to vote. So hard, <laughs> it's so hard, it's so hard. It's so many good people. Mm -hmm. I probably could pick football players better. <laughs> it's so hard because I'm thinking like it's so many people to choose from. Like I really <laughs> like AI. I like Kobe. Yeah. I'm not gonna pick Jordan because I never really watched him play. You mm -hmm. know. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. So it's probably be it probably be between Kobe or AI for my third choice. All right, what about you, Kai? Man, it's hard to figure out figure out my like third, Russell but for sure like my Russell first two, AI and D Rose. Yeah, D Rose, my dog, man. I'll be so mad he got them injuries, man. Man, for real, Mr. don't even get me started. Mr. Glass, hey, man, hold on. Don't disrespect. <laughs> if LeBron was the same way, you'd be mad. If, if he was the same way, he wouldn't be my favorite player because he wouldn't be a yeah. thoroughbred. All right, this is the last one. This is the last one. Top three fools. Crab legs, Coney Island, <laughs> and neck bones. Like neck bones. <laughs> my family from the south. So. <laughs> oh, I said, hey, my mom made neck bones. It wasn't enough meat on that boy. You be picking like a mud. Like. I found a cheat code. Neck bones and black eyed peas. Yep, I hated that. I just that. had that last night for dinner. I eat bologna sandwich. Whenever my mom made that, like I take bologna. <laughs> <laughs> I think belong I know I know your I know two of your top two definitely gonna be pizza and french fries. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah, that's mine. Pizza, Damn. French fries, you can go all day. Damn. Season salt, she french gonna, fries, barbecue salt. All right. Which is how three dog. Uh, pizza, french pizza, fries. French fries. Uh damn. I like sushi. I'm not gonna Ooh, lie. Yes, my girl trying to get me on sushi. I just, I just name. I gotta try it. Gotta Question: try it. Do you like do you like spicy stuff? Yeah. Oh, Ooh, you get the wasabi. Well, all you gotta do. We need to go on a double date with you. <laughs> For sushi. real. All you gotta do once you once you figure out uh once she gets you into the wasabi mixing with the soy sauce. Yeah. And that was what I did. I'm I'm like, we go to this one spot. Is all you can eat um Japanese? They get all you eat uh crab legs, lobster tails, mm -hmm. and sushi. Where at? It's called Fuji. It's in Troy, right across from Okinawa. Oh, that's all I Dang, I pass that place pretty much every damn <laughs> yeah. day on the way to work, and yeah. I don't even know about right, it. Right, we need to stop here. All right, so here. I'm holding y'all up, so we're going to end it off like I told y'all earlier, man. Drunk moment or hot moment? A funny story when huh. y'all was on one. All right, so I'm going to do a drunk moment. The, <laughs> the story I remember, drunk is one of the drunkest days <laughs> I've ever been. It was on Cinco de Mayo. It was a year I graduated college, mm -hmm. and we was all going out. We was downtown Ann Arbor. And we was going out to celebrate. And I just remember, like, we was pre-gaming. Mm -hmm. We started drinking early. Like, we started off with Coronas. Then we all went to the liquor store and we all picked something different. <laughs> like, everybody decided to have something different. Somebody had Jaeger. Somebody had Henny. Henny somebody had Crown. Yeah. And I don't even remember what I had. Probably Jack, because that's what I used to drink a okay. lot. That used to be my favorite, <laughs> favorite. So, we, like, we, like, partying. You know, we drinking. We doing whatever so we get to the club and when i get to the club i start running into people i know and they like this one girl was like i'm so proud of you you one of the first people we know to graduate let me buy you a drink so she bought me a drink <laughs> and of course tequila shots yeah. is what's on sale oh yeah for sure so yeah, now yeah. i'm at the bar drinking tequila after all the brown that we been drunk <laughs> yeah, you messed and up the coronas that we didn't pregame so Ooh. i'm like taking shots and then i run into somebody else i know and they had a drink in their hand i was like 
oh, thank you. Like, literally just snatched the drink Duh. out their hand. It was Long Island. <laughs> oh, so you did. So now I'm drinking Long Islands, too. You know, like, literally. So we leave. So, like, the time's going by. You know, I'm like, you know, you start off dancing. Mm. Then you start feeling drunk. You start slowing down. you like... I'm like, I'm slowing down. And I was like, I got to go. Like, I'm like, it's time for me to leave. Like, I got to go. So we get in the car. We had to call a cab. We left the people we came with because I was like that fried. Man. We left. We get in the cab. We get home. And like, uh, my ex at the time, he like, get me out the car and like, put me on the side of the car. And I was so <laughs> drunk. I fell. Like, I was like outside of the cab. And I'm like. Boom! And I hit, and that was my second time falling. Damn. Like, I remember I was downtown Ann Arbor, and I, like, was walking, and I had these chucks I had just had. It was, like, my first time wearing these boys. And I fell into, like, a pile of, the, you know, they be, they be having that moss that they be putting in the plants. Yeah. I fell into a pile. It was, like, Man. it was mud and moss all over my shoes. <laughs> and then Duh. I got out the cab, and I fell backwards on the ground, and the cab was trying to leave. And I was it like, hurt because you can't even control your body. You be just, right. Man. And I was just like, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I got here. Like, oh, my. Yeah, that'd be the worst when you can't control your body. you like, oh, I'm too drunk. Yeah, I'm drunk, was, drunk. Like that was definitely the drunkest I've been. Like I remember that day, like it was nothing. Cause like, you got full of drinking. It, it, it's not until you get to the end. Like hold on, hold on, I fucked up. Yeah, for real. Cause <laughs> I was like, I'm all over the place. When I didn't feel, when I didn't feel after my third time falling, I was like, oh, I'm done. Yeah, you had like <laughs> jet and break dance and like man. Break the club, like. Yeah, we had. So what that that out? Like hold on, oh shit. So right. Like, <laughs> you yeah, you be knowing right. the moment you yeah, like, like, oh fuck, oh. I'm in trouble. I know. Like, I, like you know, man, it be like, it be that moment bro, you, like, when you mix it moment, too many. You be like, like, oh, oh I ain't fucked up, shit, right? Effed up, right? What about, what about you, Kyle? Up, right? Man, what about you, bro? Uh, man, <laughs> a lot of a lot of stories. I would say one one that's I would say is probably one of my funniest stories. Uh, is I was I was super drunk this uh this day. So I had I it was in college. I had finals week. I literally. Finished like my my capstone project, everything. Have all my major finals over with. I had this one exam. It was like an easy class. It was like you know like one of those uh, classes you took like in school where they was like you pretty much filed a book work to do stuff on Microsoft Word and Excel yeah, yeah, yeah. and PowerPoint. So it was one of them easy classes. Like oh, yeah. you it's pretty much <laughs> you pretty much got to yeah. deck it up like to not get it right. So I I had studied like the whole week. I use Adderall a lot, like, to help me study. Yeah. So, if you don't know, Adderall takes its toll. Like, <laughs> so, after, like, two or three days of using that shit, it's like, my body was not, it, I hadn't eaten a lot, you know, oh, like. because yeah, you don't eat when you're on Adderall. Yeah, you don't, you don't eat a lot, like, you, your lack of sleep. Like, so, you know, one of, one of, uh, one of my friends, he came through, he, he had a bottle of some whiskey. And he was like, yo... We done. We only got this one, uh, this one class left. And I'm like, shoot, that ain't nothing. So I'm, you know, it's it's Thursday night, thirsty Thursday too. So I'm like, for sure, I'm about to get lit. You know, I pregame. I had, I go to, I go to dinner, and then I got an eight o'clock class, and like the test is in that eight o'clock class. Oh lord. I got super <laughs> lit before dinner. It's literally everything is hitting me at dinner. I'm like. Man, <laughs> I don't feel like eating, but I'll just go to this test, you yeah. know. So I go to this test. It's like kind of like a square out, like a square setup. Everybody kind of just, you know, on their laptops and stuff doing it. And then we got like a little worksheet that's got like, you know, matching and multiple choice. I don't even know if my teacher smelled out the amount of alcohol that was like <laughs> on my breath. <laughs> I literally, so one time, I felt like I was going to throw up. I was like, I got to go to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom. Nothing happened. I was like, oh, well, shit, I'm good. I'm good. Like, go back to the class. I'm literally looking at the worksheet, and these numbers and <laughs> letters are moving. And I'm like, uh, can I, I'm not feeling so well. You know, I'm like, can I, I know this is a final, like, can I take this, like, the next day, like, like I, I just can't yeah. do it. She was cool as hell because she let me, like, literally, she let me finish the computer portion and then the other portion she let me take home and, like, she was, like, just email me or submit yeah. the answers. 
But I was so <laughs> lit that day. Duh. I left the class. I walked outside, was in a daze, and like threw up in front of the building. Man. Like the next day, I don't care. I, I threw up so bad in my college <laughs> days. I ain't never gave a fuck about that. <laughs> but the next day, it was funny because it was like on Twitter. Like it was like some girl. She was like, it was some girl that was like in one of my business classes. She was like, Whoever threw up in front of Peel Hall, really fucking disgusting. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. Threw up your whole life that boy. <laughs> Ain't nothing like that throw up. You be, man, that junk hurt. Especially when you throwing up and only a little spit come out. Like, you you threw up your oh, whole yeah. inside. Man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> man, that junk terrible, man. Hey, man, it was cool having y'all on, but we gonna end it off. We say, well, with your newest poem, poem right? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna get we're gonna get popping with this Ray, new poem. Ray snap them fingers. All right. So this poem is no title. I don't have a title for it yet, but here we go. This is this is a shower is everybody exclusive. Yes, right I haven't here. posted. Oh, right here. Okay, cool. I I didn't know. <laughs> okay, here we go. I love teaching my daughter black traditions, like teaching her lift every voice and sing, and then showing her how Beyonce did it, or. Calling off on MLK Day because what's the point of us having a national holiday if we still got to work anyway? <laughs> or never teaching her how to play space but still expecting her to learn. And especially that super secret baked chicken recipe that my great-grandma only passed down to me. So it's an honor that I pass it down to the next generation to my mini-me. Mm. I don't exactly remember the day when I started to feel responsible for teaching her everything that it means to be black. But I think it was the day when she came home and told me that everyone at her school knew her because she had brown skin. At that moment, I realized that black girls at white schools don't get the same tools. They don't learn the same things. They don't learn that Kooji Chakalia means self-determination, but it could also be the name of your new best friend. They don't learn to roll their necks when they're about to put somebody in check as they perfect the get out of my face look. They don't rock their hips in a mob on they don't ro learn to rock their hips in a mob on the playground instead all she sees is little Sally's walking down the hallway. See, when you have a black girl who goes to a white school, you have to teach them to be brave. Because they are forced to play by different rules. They will ask you about your parents as if you have one even though you have four. They will ask you crazy questions about how your hair grows. They will ask you to dance. They will ask you if you're good at sports and things of those sorts. But I have to remind her that being assertive does not mean that you have an attitude. Being educated does not mean that you talk like a white girl. And building self-confidence is something that you have to learn from within. I remind her that we have royalty. Courses through our veins and sometimes the journey to get to your coronation will not be easy sometimes you will be too black for your white friends and too white for your black friends but I have the confidence that you will light your own path and not try to fit in but when things get hard because sometimes they will I remind her that we shall overcome is a part of our family's creed and we are just the blossoming seed of our ancestors wildest dreams and if you believe like they met like that man that they call dr king this little black girl who goes to a white school will go on to do amazing things thank you <laughs> <laughs> that was dope that was dope that was dope hey what, what you doing that do is there ever a time that you did some poetry and forgot the words oh yeah definitely and then what you do like with rap you can probably just like make up some stuff or just I'm a good freestyler, yeah. so it like if I mess up something, <laughs> I can keep going. Like I freestyle all That's the dope. time. I do. I, it's it's all good. We definitely gonna have to come to that Wednesday. I got a game. I might have a game that day, depending on my team still in the playoffs. But I'm definitely. You say six to nine. Yep, six to nine. Sometimes we run like kind of to ten, but mm -hmm. definitely a good vibe. Yeah, I'm gonna have me and my fantasy gonna come up there and, and, and check y'all out. So uh, give it, give the people y'all uh y'all social media uh, where they can find a business. Yeah, yourself. so make sure y'all follow me. Simple dot natural. That's my most important thing. Follow me at Instagram is simple. S I M P L E D O T natural N A T U R A L. Make sure you follow me. Sign up for my mailing list. Like my page on Facebook and my personal page. If you want to find Cash Cashley Galaxy the poet, 
that is Miss Unpopular Ashley. So Unpopular U N P O P U L A R A S H L E Y. You can catch most of my poetry performances on my page and find out everything about the process with my business on my business page. So please make sure you like, follow, share. Yeah, I just use some my my skin shining. <laughs> Lord, yep. I'm telling you, man, I do wonders. Yeah, what about you, man? What where, where can I find you at? You can follow me on all social media platforms at Kyle Mac F K Y L E M A C K A V E, whether that's Twitter, IG, Reddit, Tumblr, uh, Facebook. Either way, I'm gonna be reachable. And my uh, music is available on all streaming platforms. All you gotta do is search Kyle Mac. K-Y-L-E space M-A-C-K You'll find all types of works like Extracurricular, Heart to Heart, Heart to Heart uh, Yeezy Shrug Jiu Jitsu, all that jazz That's what's up, that's what's up. I definitely gotta have y'all It's a pleasure having y'all on the show. I gotta have y'all come again man. It was, it was nice talking to y'all definitely Nah, thank you for good, letting good us good join the show man it. it might be the longest uh, what we did so far <laughs> high <laughs> I said that I told you in the beginning yeah. I was like we talkers so no we it was see. cool it was cool yeah but and like I said to the next <clears> episode <throat> don't let don't watch his page as far as him proposing <laughs> 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 hey if you want to propose right I mean, you might want to follow it if you if you think your shit might be whack don't look at the only <laughs> stuff man. peace out till next time bye <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs>